Welcome, welcome, welcome to episode number 29. Matt, I'm looking 30. at you. I think it's 30, right? Episode number 30, 2030. Episode back. 30 of the Eve's Drop podcast. First and foremost, I'd like to apologize ahead of time. Um, I promised myself that last time I wasn't going to do that. The next time that something like this was happening, that I was going to address the public and, and, and be as transparent as possible as I possibly could with the situation that's happening. Uh, but you just can't. And as much as I tried to, I can. And I couldn't upload anything because the 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 the, the question would have been the same. And everybody deserves to know what's happening. And I couldn't put myself in a position to to be like, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. I don't have yeah. anything. I don't have anything. So the last thing I said was that as of right now and still to this very moment, as I grasp for air, we continue to grasp for air. Uh, today's Saturday as we are recording this. Um, and uh, and it's been a year long coming. You have notes and shit. You're yeah. you're ready to go. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Well, I wanted to I wanted to talk to to we're we're obviously going to talk about everything about everything right from our perspective. You know, obviously we can't assume other people's. There's two sides of every story and all that. Right. But when uh, when several people sort of experience the same the reality. Same, yeah. Is there? Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. So, but, but first, all right. So, uh, this podcast is brought to you by DoorDash, DoorDash.com, and I'm gonna give you guys a little bit more information on that as soon as uh, we take a little bit of break uh, to give you guys uh, the heads up that you guys all want. Also, Express VPN coming back for a, I believe, fifth time, fourth time, something along those lines. So, super, super, thank you to them for coming back. Um, but Hitch, thank you for joining me. I appreciate you coming on. I know that. We have, we have gone up to the to the firing range several times. We aim down sights, and we have always just said, always, just one hundred percent of the time. Yeah, for a, for a long time. Even this morning, when you texted me, he's like, "You're still doing this at 10. It's four o'clock now." I was, uh, bef- as I was typing to you, yes, my head was like, uh, "Are you know, should yeah. we do this?" I mean, and and. And I think we should. I think it's it's time. I think we gave everybody uh, a, a try. We <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but here we are. It's still nerve right. Are you nervous? I'm kind of nervous. Uh, sort of, man. I think that at, at this point, the only thing I'm nervous about is it's not having that locked in anymore and using that as fuel to right. to do something else. I'm more nervous about not not like any. Not about what it's going to affect other people, just more so like kind of admitting that this kind of all happened. Like there's been so much that for so like because you guys had issues in sixty fifty, you guys had issues prior to that. We had issues, definitely had issues in the scuff house, Mm -hmm. but we were always able to just do it the optic way where we don't say anything, let it unfold behind closed doors, and then bring it to the public, to the optic fans whenever it was necessary, and just say, hey, we got past this. Mm -hmm. Uh, It was a thing. That happened, and we got past it, and that's what makes Optic Optic. And so for the longest time, we didn't talk about any of this stuff. Yeah. And it never reached that step. I was, so. I was listening to the, to the Flycast, as I always do, and you, got, you mentioned like how there has never been any leaks in our history. The right. only leaks that we have ever done is when we've you know, messed up, and we said, Turtle Beach is going to be here. I, I did, yeah, that yeah, did that in my blog. Yeah. And I ran and, 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 and uh, that. How they figured out that I said Pepsi. When I blocked out, blacked out my mouth, that right. was like you know, kudos to them for figuring that out. You know, which which actually brings me to some of the stuff that I want to talk to talk about first. And there's the Tifu versus Face thing, and then Merck's just dropped the video today too, talking about his yeah. relationship with Nate Shot. And I've always been the 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 type to just like, just like you said. Keep yeah. it behind closed doors. Like there's right. you know, there's certain things that we obviously want to show the public and all that and and that, but um, I don't know. I just don't like it when it's out in the public because w- yeah. w- with public perception comes this sort of responsibility where you then have to think. Well, a thousand people are thinking the same thing. Am I wrong in not in not thinking that? Right. And it influences you in a in a way that maybe it shouldn't. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've never been in a situation where I've butted heads or gotten into that much of an altercation so i've been pretty public about everything like people you Mm -hmm. you know you always used to kind of rag on me for it in the scuff house and then of course it kind of got me in trouble last year but uh, i've never been in a situation where i thought that it could be solved behind closed doors and then went public about it because i think that's where it gets sticky like for the most part i like to keep things that 
are very very serious behind closed doors and then if i feel like i i have a i feel like i have a close knit audience like as my personal brand mm-hmm. but then that gets kind of haywire-ish whenever i talk to the optic fan base what what's your thoughts on the tfue versus face thing <sighs> shit man uh i don't know it's weird it's a weird situation because what i do feel i feel bad for banks because you know banks i mean we both know banks he puts his heart and soul into everything, everything. almost like like a lunatic like he, he kind of he, he is kind of crazy he's crazy in the fact that he's very passionate and he gives it 110 percent, which is why people love him yeah um I've gotten kicked out of an IHOP because of him. I know a lot of people have been. He's just he's just he's a hundred percent all the time. Yes. And so you I, so anybody who knows him or um, has known him in the past knows that he's not faking. He's yeah. not he's not bullshitting when he's when he's talking this way. Um, that being said, there's so much more behind this contract than just Banks versus Tifu. I feel like Tifu is going to regret how everything went down. Mm-hmm. Uh, with banks, the same way that I regretted how that around the bar video affected you and I, mm-hmm. rather than everything else that was going on, because yeah. the situation is way bigger than banks. It has to do with corporations and and billionaires yeah. and different things that go behind the contracts. And so yeah. I think that's what more of what Tifu is worried about. And Tifu's, uh, you know, banks keeps talking about Tifu's dad, and Tifu has a lawyer team and different things, and so they're all talking in his ear one way. Faze is talking to his ear another way, and he's a 21-year-old dude that's really good at video games. So how much is he supposed to know, you know? I, enough. <laughs> enough to know that some things are kept behind closed doors. True. And look, I, 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 this is going to be super biased, in my opinion, because I have I have a, maybe not that close of a relationship as I used to with with the Faze guys. Yeah. Um, you know, before that, that uh, before that dude Sebastian stepped into the picture, like Tommy and I used to talk a lot. Right. And when when this dude stepped in, I, I, I think we sort of lost our our you know our talks in a sense. Mm-hmm. You know, we we because you could tell from the beginning. And I, look, I'm not going to talk bad about that dude. I just you know I don't have time for that. I don't want to pile on to the problems that he's got now. But like I could tell very early on that he wanted to be the end all be all four phase. Right. And he did his thing and and, and got in there. Um, but I known these dudes as long as, as, as I have. And when I saw, I was sitting at my desk right there when I saw the, the Hollywood report come out that Tifu was suing face. I literally typed a text message to banks and didn't send it because it ended with like, it's none of my business. So yeah. please tell me if I'm overstepping. But I got a little bit like upset because when I saw it, I was like, there's no way this dude, my, my, my immediate thought was like, it's not Tifu, it's his team. And I didn't know about his dad being his dad, his manager or any of that. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't send it because I was just like, you know, I got my own shit to fucking deal with. You know, <laughs> <laughs> understatement of yeah, the century. Yeah. But at the same time, I felt I felt for Banks because I like for as long as I've known him, like you just said, he's always been just like a loyal dude to everybody that has come in a circle. For sure. And then from an organizational standpoint, you know, from from an optic standpoint, like I know what I know that. It's not the way that, the, that 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 it seems, right? Like, yes, you know, the org benefits, sure, but more often than not, and this is across all esports, the players have uh, a, a higher a higher upside in in being an organization. Yeah. Now, what I mean by that is is that they may not necessarily be getting the money that the sponsorships are being thrown into the into the organization, but neither is the organization. The organization is just saying, "All right, you get this piece, and then the rest of this is going to go to expansion. This is going to go to houses. It's going to go right. to travel." So, you know that, and um, that paired with the fact that I know what a platform does for an individual, especially a big ass platform like Phase. Phase didn't have to try as hard as they did to help him. Right. Would he have blown up? Sure. He's good maybe. enough. Maybe. Thank you. Maybe. Maybe. It's the same situation that happened with Nade and Optic. Nade put in the work. You can't deny the fact that Nade Ever. put in the work. You can't deny the fact that Seth put in the work and that Seth has the skill and that Nade had the skill. Mm-hmm. But don't, like, a lot of people, I guess, forget the fact that Predator was around, Midnight was around, Detreats was around. The Optic was the biggest thing in COD. And then a competitive team came through. I remember Nate Shot's first video on mm-hmm. Firing Range, like or on um, I forgot the name of the map, it's a DLC map in MW2. But I remember Trailer Park. I remember all like whenever he first came in into Optic, 
and how big of a statement that was because Optic was getting a competitive team. You guys had had one in the past, but this competitive team was doing what everybody else in Optic was doing, which was focusing on content. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much the same thing that happened with FaZe and Tifu. So yeah. you can't deny the fact that he's amazing at the game and his work ethic is crazy, but who there are a lot of other people out there who have an amazing work ethic and an amazing skill set yeah. that don't ever find that success. Right. I the, the, I said it, and I'll say it again. I can open doors all day long, but right. it's up to the individual to walk through the door and, and, and own the room. Right. That just pretty much means that I can help you get somewhere, but it's up to you to put in the work and, and, and do the politicking right. and do everything that you need to do that to, to, to get there. I know... I mean, in, in the graph shows, right? Like the the second that he became face, and then it it, it, sky, it, it yeah. hockey sticks, as they say, uh, upwards. I it, like everything came like I don't follow face as much as 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 I probably should as a competitor, but yeah. I have seen the fact that Banks got a tattoo of his boy on him to help him out, Kotifu. I have seen all of that. It was, in my opinion, it was completely completely wrong. Not contract and all that shit aside. Yeah. Obviously, there was there was something there because a couple of days later, Tifu releases his two minute video talking about the contract, and then yeah. the contract. I don't know if it leaks. I think Banks or whoever just like literally let it get out. Somebody there. leaked it on purpose for sure. Yeah, um, it it seems fucking bogus as fuck, right? Seems like 80, a terrible contract. Yeah, eighty twenty and all that, and and uh, and I am personally gonna vouch for the fact that I don't know this, okay? <laughs> But I can guarantee you that none of the FaZe boys knew what the fuck was in that contract. Oh, for sure. There's that, no way. There's no way. I think a lot a lot of the things that happen is that people kind of kind of take what they see and run with it, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of what whenever we had, I, I don't, I'm don't. i sure we'll get into that later, but yeah. whenever we had our like public thing, mm -hmm. people, there was so much that people had wrong and that collided me and you together. Yeah. Where in this situation, there's so much of the, the people, I think people literally think that Banks sat down and typed out a contract want, yeah. and then showed it to Tifu and explained everything no. and Tifu signed it or faked and that's not yeah. there's it's it's Tifu and Fate uh, Tifu and Banks got together and they talked it out and said, "Yo, this would be crazy if this happened." Yeah. And then they talked to their separate people, mm -hmm. made it happen, and then it turned out later to just be whack. Think about being Face, right? Think about being Banks and saying and and, and you know what, man? This is like how and I don't want to. I don't want to call Banks crazy because he obviously has his his you know his thing right. right? And uh, and I know that you don't mean that, and, and he knows that I don't mean this either. But it's a, it's he, like a good way of being. he he didn't have to be the one to step out into the limelight and go against his friend. You know what I'm saying? Like he could have put somebody in corporate face True. to say these things, but he, being him, put himself in the front line. Right. To take all of the all the heat, keeping heat off of temper, yeah, keeping heat off of off of uh, uh, rain and yeah. off of rug. You I know, don't know when Banks got so damn well spoken too, dude. His videos, whenever yeah. I see him, I'm like, like I, I I know I haven't hung out with him since like COD, mm -hmm. which he was going to COD events in like three years, fourteen or something. Apparently, like he's that. banned. Banned from COD events. Banned for MLG. I wouldn't. Events. I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know why though. <laughs> I wouldn't uh, be shocked. Yeah, but I I haven't hung out with him. And I don't even know if he remembers hanging mm -hmm. out with me because it was prior to Optic days. Um, but he has he did the same thing with me. He'd be like, "Yo, you're you're fucking great, man. And, you know, drunk or something. Yeah. You're fucking great. You're gonna make it. You're gonna do." It. And he's like that with people that he sees. Yeah, I guess uh, potential in. Yeah. Um. So I haven't hung out with him since then. And then this video comes out, and I know he he does a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And then this video comes out, and he's just so well spoken, mm -hmm. and still has like the bank's flair on everything. Yeah. But. I don't know. I was I was impressed basically by by his videos. Yeah, and and again, like I, if 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 I was a betting man and I am, and somebody said, "Do you think any of them read that contract?" I would. I can tell you that they didn't. Yeah. Not banks. I'd not temper. That. Not rain. I'm not, not a betting man. Yeah. And I would bet on that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just think that you know, that, look, man. Th if you look at their lifestyle, their lifestyle is literally a dream lifestyle. Yeah. They get to just wake up and have fun. Right. Do you think that they have time? To, and I'm not making this an excuse for for them. Okay. I know what what it should be but some people just aren't cut out for that yeah and when somebody came in and offered help like i bet you that contract came from the old dude i bet you that contract that Probably. that 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 super and, and and think about this 
yes, is predatory. It is it's fucked up. It shouldn't be that. Yeah. But I can guarantee you, and they can't come out and say, I did I didn't read the contract that I was putting. That's not their job. Their job is to continue to be cool and, and make that happen. Right. And then the business people are gonna do this. Now, here's the other question though. What if Tifu would have would have been a fail? He still got paid. He still got the promotion. He still could have gotten, you know, grown his social media stuff, and he still could have gotten sponsorship. But what if it didn't work out as good as he did? What if Tifu just didn't go out, go on to become that? Then what? Then 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 what happens to the to the investment from the organization to make that happen? Because that same, because yeah. that same sort of investment happens not just with one player; it happens with ten players right. at once. And, and they've, you, they've I mean, how many Fortnite people have they? signed how many different people have they signed in general like yeah. they still i think they're still signing cod players yeah cod snipers too i think they just renounced that so oh they're signing snipers again i think i think so that um that contract and that way of signing people probably goes on with a hundred people but out of a hundred people you're gonna only gonna get actually out of a out of a thousand signs you're only gonna get one tifu yeah so it just happens that he still signed that contract and he just happened to become Tifu. Yeah. Same thing happened, not the same thing, but yeah. it happened with Ninja and LG as well, Luminosity. Yeah. Ninja blew up way past what Luminosity yeah. could a- afford or could provide him. And he was still under contract. And I think they worked it out really well. He still had a little tiny Luminosity yeah. logo. He still had the link to the Luminosity store. But for the most part, it was the Ninja show. Yeah. Look, I can argue both sides, man, because right. like. Y- I'm glad that I saw that they the the text and the and the things that were they were trying to fix that contract, you yeah. know where they were trying to offer him something. Right. He could have just said, "No, nah, I'm not going to do it," and then go on. But then look at the organization, the amount of stuff that they put into this dude. That he just gets to walk away with like all that. Not only that, but this is something that I've always struggled with, and why I've always, up until recently or like last year, I always kept optic as 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 close as I right. as I possibly could because I know that if pe- like minded individuals see the vision and understand that this is like a, this isn't a as much money as is involved in this is not. A business, business. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. This is a a a club. It's not. Uh, it, it's a club that makes money. Therefore, business is involved. But it doesn't have to go all the way business. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. It doesn't have to go traditional sports business <laughs> sort of way. It doesn't. Imagine if. Imagine this scenario. Uh, banks, uh, rice gum, rain. Uh, you know, adapt and all these is Apex and the, and the rest. Imagine these dudes chose to say chose the sideman way you know sidemen are aware of esports okay but they just do their own thing because they're really really good at that right right imagine how many people's lives sidemen can change by giving opportunities to up and coming good players yeah okay imagine if face did the same thing and they said you know what Let's just keep it us, boys. We're going to make way more money if we just keep it us. We all understand the vision. Yeah. We all understand what we want to do. Let's not help anybody else raise to the to the heights that they could because of our platform. Especially when you're going to utilize the same people that we gave you, the same fandom that we gave you. You're going to turn those people against, against us. us. Yeah. It's no. it's not right. And again, yeah. Tifu, if I don't know, he probably won't watch, but if he does, I understand. I understand the position that you're in. You didn't expect to blow up the way that you did. But there are certain things that you don't do. And you know what's even crazier? I know that Tifu didn't do it. And I know because Banks said that he didn't do it. Oh, I know. I know this is... His team. Other his, people. His pops. Other people whispering his in his brothers. ear. His brothers, yeah. I mean, I, last year was big for me because I feel like I got... I got uh, For the first time in my life, I figured out how to like really think for myself and yeah. really like stand up for myself in certain situations. And I think I think this whole situation would be a very big learning experience for Tifu because not only will he understand not to sign terrible contracts, but he'll also understand how to deal with situations like this in the future. Because this got brought to the public. Well, I don't know. I, I want to say this got brought to the public when it uh, way earlier than it needed to be brought, which is probably true. But anybody who's been in, uh, you know, in that kind of circle, I'm not even in that circle, and I knew that people in phase were upset with their contracts. Like, yeah. I'm sure you. I did. didn't know that you did it. No. Oh, maybe. this came as a shock to me. Dude. Really? Yeah. Oh, as soon as soon as he said he, was, I wasn't expecting him to sue Phase, but yeah. I had heard the rumblings that you know a couple of people in Phase were upset with their contracts, and I just talk to the player. Right. The, yeah, yeah. The thing is, man, is that as as much as Phase has like a support group of businessmen behind them. Yeah. 
they don't get it. Right. Uh, they, look, uh, maybe two, okay? But some people just don't get it. Right. And, and it's not even just getting esports or getting gaming entertainment. It's the culture within FaZe that they don't get. Right. I can guarantee you, man, if you look at a, at a FaZe contract from fucking 2000 and up to 2014... <laughs> Right. It's, a, it's the same contract that you see across all of esports. It was when new people started to come in that that shit became what it became. Yeah. But again, I, I just go back to the fact that I, I can guarantee you none of those boys know know us. And there's not an excuse. I'm not making excuses for them. They're grown ass adults, even though I call them boys. Yeah. But man, you know when you're when you're out having fun and and you're you're making money having fun, like right. you have to put somebody in place to to do that. Yeah. I, I'm I'm gonna tell you one thing. I don't watch my vlogs. Okay, after I give it to him, I know what I said. If he edits it and if he puts, you know, whatever, I want to know until the video goes. I want to know until I woke up right. that he fucked up and did something. Right. You know, is that is that excusing my ignorance? No, you can use ignorance and, as an excuse. That's my fault for not keeping an eye on my people. Sure. But true, man, true. I, I, I can guarantee you, man, that that the Tifu had had people in his ear, unfortunately, because they pinned uh, the, he pinned. Whoever pinned him against his boy and, yeah. and somebody who cared for him, somebody who who literally felt proud of him becoming how he became, and then he does that bullshit. Yeah. Ooh, it, it angers me, man, because I can I can see you it from, can, from you an, can see it from an or an owner yeah. standpoint. Yeah. yeah, which is what a lot of people can't a lot of people can't see it from that way. Like they'll say stuff like Tifu shouldn't have signed the contract. Like that's that's the biggest that's the that's the biggest like. Uh, I guess backlash that Tifu's getting is that you know you signed a terrible contract like it's it's your fault and then a lot of people are roasting FaZe but not a lot of people are taking it until Banks made that video not a lot of people are are really thinking about it from the how much this could hurt FaZe and how yeah. much this could hurt what you know Tommy and Banks built yeah they don't need to fuck people out of money to make more money and that's and, and, yeah. and look I don't know why people do things okay but I I, sure. I just knowing them for as long as I have like been been with them for as long as i have uh you know and ha hung out with them behind closed doors and like yeah. uh, you know talk with them like i know i know in in and i'm a fucking excellent judge of character <laughs> so did you know so since you you were i guess you you were surprised by the tifu thing were you surprised by the nick Merckx thing or did you know because I, I mean i guess you can't really talk about it because no well is is that too man like uh like in watching Nick's videos, and I, look, I, I know that you know people are gonna feel certain ways about this. I mean, Nature may even get mad at me for even talking about it, but yeah, I just and and we're about to make this this podcast too, talking about what right. happened in 2018. Yeah, but some things, man, that's like be a little hypocritical, but yeah, at least we're acknowledging it. Yeah, yeah and and I'm not excusing myself, but you know, if you listen to it, if you listen to it, like uh, his his first thing, the first thing that he says is like, you know, the plan was for for me to grow you know what i'm saying like for me to to elevate and then through that we're gonna elevate that you know what i'm saying like there, 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 there's there's actually i don't know the ins and outs of of what their relationship was what like was like yeah. every single time i've asked nate nate's like uh it's between me and him you know i don't got nothing to say yeah which is fucking honorable as fuck yeah. man you know what i'm saying like to me Especially behind closed you. doors yeah shut door He's like, no, nah, it's between me and, and i'm not talking i'm not before i say this because it could be very controversial and i'm you know cool with Nate and cool with uh, Nick Merckx is this this situation for you know from the outside perspective because I very much on the outside it, it very much is similar to when you and Nate kind of had that thing or it's like brought somebody in left and then there's weird terms yeah. both sides have their own view of different things and so that's why I was that's why I was curious if <laughs> Nate talked to you about it but I guess he didn't. No, look, the, like even, <coughs> like I, I don't know. I hope, I hope Nate doesn't make a video. Like if I, oh, if, I, I don't think he will. Okay. I think Nate's I, too smart for that. Well, it's not even a smart thing. It's just like, man, when you know, like if you didn't do anything wrong, why are you gonna fucking go defend right. yourself? You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. That's the way I've, I've always seen. Nate things. doesn't need. Nate can get the views whenever he wants. He yeah. doesn't need the views. He doesn't need drama views. I don't yeah. think Nate likes drama views. I really. Don't. I mean, I don't. This is probably gonna be the first drama video I've ever made. I mean, I guess put down the pitchforks was a little drama. Right. You actually, people don't know this. You recorded a video to upload last week, but it just never went live. Yeah, it never went live because you don't like the drama. Just, I just, man, the people that I. <sighs> I don't think this is a drama video, man. I think no, this is a livelihood. Yeah. The the thing is, and, the, and one more thing I'll say is like I, I I've talked to Nick Merckx. I've talked to his dad at the at the Fortnite party. Like they're yeah. the, the, he's good people. Yeah. He just Super. went through something with somebody else that just 
you know does that but right. knowing nature for as long as i have like i'm there's no way that i can offer an opinion yeah other than the fact that i'm on nate's side yeah yeah i i'm i'm neutral obviously because i don't know anything about it but also the way that you know the, the way that nick brought it to his audience i can't i can't talk negatively about that because i do that shit all the time that's all i do is <laughs> yeah talk about how you know he's very like in fam we're a family we're a family yeah, yeah. and i do that shit every stream yeah. tst we're a family we all we're in the shit together and people ask me questions that i probably shouldn't answer and i answer it and yeah. then it stays in for the most part like some stuff gets out yeah gets me in trouble but i talk a lot on my stream about shit i probably shouldn't talk about and it yeah. never gets out so i don't know i can't really I don't know. I hope them both the best because they're they both yeah they, they both did, crush they, it. They didn't need to go through through this sort of stuff, and I guess an explanation was needed, right? You can't you can, you don't just leave in that. Yeah. But I don't know. I think uh, if they would, I don't even know. I haven't talked to Nate, but I don't I don't know. I don't know if they've talked with each other about the situation or, or not. But uh, that would have been an incredible <laughs> duo ship right there. I think that they would have done sure. fucking amazing work together. You yeah. know, um, I'm sure they'll find. I mean, Nate and Jack right now seem to be killing it. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure you know Nick is a n notorious non collaborator. Mm -hmm. He he blew up on his own. Yep, and um, so if he does find a duo, that'll be dope to watch. You know, he has Aiden and some other people, yeah. but even if he doesn't, he's gonna keep doing his thing. So yeah. shit like this is gonna continue to happen until until people are more <clears throat> clear with each other as to what's what. Yes. You know, because when when you think about an organization. And, and I guess right now it's it's like it's like everyone's leaving orgs. You know what yeah, I'm saying? What so it's, so it's making it a little bit uh, more more. Everyone? Mm, Where are we? Are we? Uh <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I don't know. It's it's just I understand. And, and even Nate and I have had conversations like that. When when he left, I'm like I'm like, dude, we just brought in you know this sponsorship. How would you have taken it if I said, hey, I'm taking the majority of this money to go into Counter Strike? Yeah. And he was like fuck that you right. know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. And, and it's always going to be that way until until you are on both sides if, until you play offense and defense yeah you're never going to know what people are going through and and as much empathy that you can find for other people and as as much as you can understand like you'll never truly understand it until it happens to you right um yeah so i really hope uh, look Merck's is going to continue to skyrocket he's uh he's entertaining He's he's uh he knows what he's doing and I think he didn't get even in that video I don't think he gave himself enough credit from uh because I've spoken to him he's a very very smart dude yeah you know uh and so he when when he, he yeah when he said that he couldn't sit at the tables with all these business people I don't think that he understood that those business people were there as his partners to fill a gap that you know so yeah. I I think I don't think he did himself enough of a credit there uh you yeah. know I think I think he can hang in those super in those super tables. genuine guy yeah that too man and. For people like you guys, super genuine guys, I'm not saying that I'm not genuine, but I just I'm just not not as open uh, right. about it. But you guys sometimes catch a little bit of flack for being as open as you are. Yeah, on both sides, from the public and from internal sources, um, which which sort of sucks, but it is what it is. I just the Tifu thing is the one that that's that's gonna suck the most because, like you said, he's gonna learn something from this. Mm -hmm. The number one thing that he's gonna learn is that friends like banks, yeah. That they're important. One in a million. One in three. One yeah. in five fucking million. That's. I mean, that's probably the, what I learned the most out of this whole optic thing is that your your loyal friend. Like, I I got so pissed because I thought you know I, I had to have sassy tweeted about it a lot last year. Is that I thought loyalty meant everything, and for a while it looked like that wasn't the case. Like. Because I kept getting shafted and everybody that I knew that was loyal kept getting shafted. But at the end of the day, you know, like if if you're if you're loyal to the people that you know, understand the scene like banks, that's the most important. Like what who is it makes me wonder who who Tifu thinks he's showing his loyalty to right yeah. now, because that could very well. I mean, it could be fine, but it could come back to bite him in the ass because because yeah. banks is somebody you always want in your corner. Family ain't always blood. And people yeah. seem to forget that, yeah. you know, it's, it's okay to tell your family members that they're wrong. They're never going to go anywhere. If, if, if family is that really that everything, then they're never going to go anywhere, no matter what your decision. So you should make decisions based on your feelings more than anything. Right. I can guarantee fucking to you, man, that there, there's no way that I don't know how to go and going over and over and over. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let me, uh, let me take a quick break. We're going to give a, a quick shout out to our sponsors. 
Uh, our first sponsor coming back for a third, fourth, fifth time. I don't know. Just super, super, super supportive of the podcast, and I appreciate that. Express VP. And ExpressVPN secures and anonymizes your internet browsing by encrypting your data and hiding your public IP address, okay? It, it secures everything from top to bottom to make sure that no one's attacking you from a hacking stand, hijacking stand. None of those things uh, happen with this. Uh, and it has easy use applications that run seamlessly in the background of your computer, phone, and tablet. Turning on ExpressVPN protection only takes one click. Using ExpressVPN, I can safely surf on public Wi-Fi without being snooped on or having my personal data stolen. This is what happened to Mixwell. I tell the story every single time I'm doing an ad read for them. Mixwell landed, turned on his Wi-Fi, got his uh, Twitter account stolen. Um, I wonder if he logged in, though, as he was doing that. Uh, anyway, so uh, like I said, you can publicly... you can. Public Wi-Fi safely. Uh, for less than $7 a month, you can get the same ExpressVPN protection that I have here at the studio and obviously at home. Uh, ExpressVPN is rated the number one VPN service by Tech Radar and comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. I don't know how that's done, uh, but it's guaranteed for 30 days, uh, and you can have your money back. So protect your online activity today. And find out how you can get three months free at expressvpn.com forward slash hacks. That is e x p r e s s v p n dot com slash h three c z for three months free with a one year package. Visit visit expressvpn.com slash hacks to learn a tiny little bit more. No more stealing the data from unsuspecting people. Wi-Fi is one of the simplest and cheapest ways for hackers to make money. So again, visit expressvpn.com forward slash hacks with a three. And that is that. Moving on to a new one. A new, gosh darn it, a brand new sponsor. And we love to see it here in the podcast. In fact, I know that you guys are going to support them because you guys probably already do use it. But here's the deal for those of you who don't. Okay, uh, whenever you have a long date at work and you have no time to go out and shop for food, what do you do? You call DoorDash. Our sponsor this week is none other than DoorDash. Okay, how cool is that? A food one. We should order food. We should have DoorDash food right now at the beginning of the podcast to show people how quick it got here. Um, but DoorDash connects you to your favorite restaurants in your city. And when and, and I've just found this out, when there isn't a restaurant, you can suggest it. And then what they do is that DoorDash goes out and reaches out to that restaurant and then they, they roll them up into their service. Um, ordering is as easy as it comes. You just use the DoorDash application and choose what you want to eat. And the Dasher will bring it to you anywhere you are. The amount of people that don't use DoorDash is like beyond belief. Uh, like there's a lot of people that don't, that don't use this application or don't use this sort of service. Uh, not only is that burger place you love on DoorDash already, but over 310,000 other amazing restaurants are there too. DoorDash connects you to door-to-door -door delivery in 3,300 cities, in over 3,300 cities, all 50 states and Canada. Order from your local go-tos or choose from your favorite chains like Chipotle, Wendy's, Chick-fil-A, and Cheesecake Factory. Don't worry about dinner. Let dinner come to you with DoorDash. Right now, our listeners can get $5 off their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash application and enter promo code eavesdrop, E-A-V-E-S-D-R-O-P. That's $5 off your first order when you download the DoorDash application from the App Store and enter the promo code eavesdrop. Again, that's promo code eavesdrop for $5 off of your first order from DoorDash. Enjoy your meal on me. Uh, send me pictures on Twitter if you guys happen to use it. I'd, uh, I'll retweet it. Okay? Leave a like on that. All right. Let's get back to it. So, let's uh, let's start at the beginning at the top of the list. Shit, um, where, where does this begin, even? I don't even know. What, where does that begin for you? Because I, I have... I have a very vivid memory uh, about everything. Yeah. Every single so step of the way. Um, well, I guess the first thing was the talks in the house about what the next move was. There was a bunch of different moves. There was possibly Detroit, right? There was there was possibly... Oh, so that Atl far back. Atlanta. When we were looking for we were sponsorships. Looking. Or not investment. So and because... And I think, I think you have not done a... I, you, you might have to cut this. But I think you have not done a justice defending yourself because mm -hmm. people will always say, 
obviously the fucking thing they say is that you sold out to get more money, Mm -hmm. which is fucking bullshit. And you've never gone out and said it, which I will go out and say it. We, first of all, I, 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 I go all the way back to when we picked up Proofy. If you remember where Optic was before we picked up Proofy, it was at the lowest it had ever been. And we picked up Proofy and it gave us a two month leeway of things are good. Vibes. Yeah. yeah. The vibes were terrible. The COD team on the inside, we knew they hated each other. Um, and and I think the CS team was being weird at the time as well. A bunch of shit was weird and nobody was uploading videos. People hated the house. And I think that was also around the time that there was kind of a feud between, not a feud, but kind of weird vibes between the content creators because um, because of like some financial shit that happened. I don't know if you want to talk about that either. Basically, the, uh, some of the content creators tr- like like uh, confronted you about mm. oh, open- yeah, yeah. opening up the books and shit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you were like, whoa, what the fuck? Yeah. And then you did it yeah. and everything was fine. Yeah. But all of that shit was happening at one time. Yeah. And then, so the vibes were terrible and we yeah. were like, we need something. And we picked up Proofy and Proofy did what we wanted Proofy to do, which is bring the vibes. And he hey, brought Papa. it. He brought it for two months before he decided to leave, which yeah. whatever. But he did his job, man. Thank yeah, you, Proofy. I think I think the stock in Optic was raised. But because of when he picked up Proofy and things got better for a while, people forget of how much of a low point it was at. We yeah. Couldn't, and and we needed something. We needed because everybody else was getting these huge investments. And they were getting these big teams, these winning teams, and we were kind of just yeah on the downfall on all fronts. Yeah, I mean, so. look at it. Look at our team that we won uh, E League season two with, right? right? It was a it was a it was a makeshift team uh, of of misfits, right? Uh, we ended up picking up Mixwell, and then Mixwell, you know, obviously became like one of the yeah. most favorite people in in optic history to the fans. Um, but it was at the same time, and I mean, if you look at what Phase did, they went out and spent like. Uh, Allegedly went out and spent like close to two million dollars acquiring uh, the team, the super team. Super team, yeah. And I'm and I saw that, and I I immediately saw that in in Call of Duty. I'm like, there's gonna be one team out there that's gonna say, I want everything. They would have paid me whatever the buyout was to right. do that. And what am I supposed to say to to Scump? Scump, no, no, you can't take you a can't two take a, a better money. Yeah. yeah. So. I'm like, okay, I think I think it's time, and I knew that it was coming. I, 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 obviously, I'm right. fucking. I know what the game is, and we I know the, how the game is fucking played. And Optic was last, right? We were the last to do it. I think so. As well, far as the big ones, oh yeah. As far as Envy, Cloud Nine, TSM, Liquid, Phase, all of those, yeah. Even a hundred thieves, I think. Optic was the last, right? In my, I, I don't know if I don't even know if that's public, but I, I from my understanding, it was you waited. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the bottom line. Is you waited, you didn't want to do that shit, and no. then you were like, everybody else is cheating. They're gonna beat me because I, I, you fucking beat everyone at their own game, and I hate gassing you up, but I'm gonna do it this one time because no one else could. Well, fucking I like hearing do it. it, so please continue. <laughs> no one else could fucking do it. You did it. You had a brand where you brought in sponsor money. That sponsor money went directly to another source and that source was paid for and then that's how we built optic yes you did it the best and everyone else is like well we need fake money Mm -hmm. they got fake money then you were like well i can't keep up so you had to yeah and and whatever (laughs) like i I don't defend myself because of the same reasons that i said earlier it's like i know i'm right what the fuck am i gonna sit there and argue with somebody that you know the water's not wet well it's not really wet when it gets on the surface is wet i'm not gonna sit there and, and, and just argue right that and like it, it's just like unnecessary drama I man there's only True. like 15 people that are going to be coming at me calling me you know what they called me and everything you know i think it's super super and i don't give a shit i think it's it's like moronic for anybody to call somebody like me who came from where i came from a fucking sellout yeah you know what i'm saying right like i did it you know like and, and i bet you they're sitting now nah, i'm not gonna go into it anyway <laughs> so if i mean if we, look we talked to the same group that you know we talked to the Dan Gilbert yep. and this in this group. I met Blake uh, Blake Robbins at um, in Detroit with mm-hmm. uh, with Ludlow Ventures. You know we had a conversation. It didn't you know? Uh, I even texted him. I sent him a DM like uh, like sometime last week. I'm like when he's he's like yo man pulling for you. Like yeah. the amount of people that have you know thank you to everyone. Like I I, I can't reply, you know because it would seem like I'm 
asking for help or yeah. I, it, like I'm acknowledging the fact that, you know what I'm saying? I just can't do that. But yeah. I, I tell him, like, I'm like, damn, man, imagine if we would have said yes to you. We, I, I would have been partners with, with Drake right yeah. now, you know? And he's like, well, something, 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 and all that or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, we, we went with them. Atlanta was, was a big thing. We went with the, the, the Chamber of Commerce there and, and some, some people there that we were going to uh, pick. Atlanta is one of the things. Right. Talked to Houston. We were going to do something there. We talked to like three people in LA. I did, I, we fucking did it. You know, we, yeah. we, we talked to a lot of people before I said, you know, what I, you know, I was like, before thank you. you said yes to this. Yeah. yeah. Yes to, yes to this one. Um, because that was going on for like six months. That was going on for six months. The, the wild shit about any, uh, all this is that when we met with the people here in Frisco, I met with, with two dudes mm -hmm. that, that work on the other side of this wall. And Chris Cheney was a part of that group. Right. Well, or Chris Cheney found them and told them all about esports and, and what he was trying to do. So we met with them and then we spent an entire year, you know, I, when we didn't get to where we needed to get to, to make the decision that I was going to go with them, yeah. with, with these two dudes, I told Jay and I told Dan, all right, you know, we're not getting anywhere with them. It's, you know, it just didn't work out. Don't talk to them. Oh yeah. I remember that. I said, Holy don't talk God. to them. Yes. Okay. So, so Dan our agent like backs out, doesn't talk to it, them or anybody else. Uh, Jay kept on talking with with uh, with Cheney throughout right. that entire year. Right. So you know it ended up you know benefiting you know in in the in the long run because right. of, of of what happened. But but you weren't aware of it. <laughs> no, how could I be? Right. You know what I'm saying? Like it was it was uh, whatever. Yeah. Anyway, so we go and look at dope ass places downtown. You know, this, we, we, this is what hurts the most. Okay, we, we, you know, I, I know we is me, you, and Jay. Yes, yeah, right. me, you, and Jay, and Chris Cheney. No, no, Chris was. There. I met Chris once at, and it was it was while we were at like a agency. Are you sure it wasn't when we were upstairs? You were there. We all went to that building in front of uh, where where Big Timer lived just recently. Yeah, remember Cheney that he wasn't there. Are you sure? Yeah, because I I only met Cheney once, and I um. We were at um, uh, we were in some like conference room talking to realtors, and that's when he came in. And I met him mm. and everything. But as far as touring the actual places, it was just the three of us. <coughs> and that I think we did it twice. We came down here twice. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, yeah. So that's when every. And do you remember the jokes? It was the Harvey Specter jokes. Uh, you know, this is gonna be my office overlooking. We we yeah we visited. You remember that we went to a penthouse one time and the whole floor was there yeah and i remember you were saying i want that one and we were like and i remember i was like there's no way we can afford that yeah i don't even know the books yeah. or anything yeah, it was yeah. just the entire <laughs> floor of a skyscraper yeah. and you were like i want that one yeah this is the one it had a dope ass balcony i'm like i'm gonna fly my drone out of right. here yeah, we're, yeah, gonna, yeah. we're gonna throw smoke cigars out of it yeah, yeah. you know yeah. celebratory dope shit because right. uh, look it's really easy to to say as we sit here today. It's really easy for us to say all the negative shit that happened and and relive it. But there was no way, and I don't live my life this way. I don't live my life thinking about all the negative shit that can happen. Right. It's in the back of my head, and I see scenarios, sure. But I'm not a negative person. I could have. There's no way that I could have said Jay and I are going to stop talking. Right. There, there was no way that I said you know Cheney and I are going to have different views mm -hmm. of what's what. Right. Um. There was no way that I could have that I that, that I could've, you could have thought that way. No, seen the future. I would, yeah, because no. it was a very much a collaborative team effort, and we visited a bunch of different places. There was, I remember, it was a joke between the three of us. The place above Del Frisco's that was the place that we wanted. Yeah, and I remember it was. There were so many rooms. There was a there was a conference room. You were like, "That's going to be the DX Racer conference room. There's going to be yeah. DX Racers everywhere. That's yeah. where we're going to go." And then here's your your gonna, your office is going to be here. This is where there, there's going to be streaming rooms. There's going to be ping pong setups. It's yeah. going to be an optic office, and it's, it's like, going to be picture the hex quarters there. Oh, yeah, imagine this there. It would no, because it would it would have been perfect. It, perfect. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> now we can't have that. Literally man. perfect, and it was. Only all the, the, uh, the most important thing is that the, the talk was optic. The talk was we're going to, it, it was, it was, I was so excited because we were going to do something that's never been done and still has never been done in esports. We were going to bring every, all of our teams into one location and we were going to almost source fed, like, like build a super content team 
do what we did with the COD team where we make them fans. We make the, we make the fans now fans of individual players on the team so that they go and support. They not only build our teams, but they build the eSport in general, mm -hmm. which is what we wanted. We kind of did it with Gears. We kind of did it with Halo twice. And I mean, you definitely, you and Nate and Scump definitely did it with COD. So that was our goal. And at that point, we can sign anyone. We can sign a Rocket League team and then put them in videos and then have you know, all of our content creators go to Rocket League tournaments and, and cheer people on. And that was what it was going to be. All of the people collectively in Optic in the same location to do dope Optic shit. And that was the goal. And that is, that is what kept me up at night. Yes, I Those trips down here, going to the steakhouses at night, and just talking about everything and getting so excited. I remember I was my blood was pumping. I was writing down notes and I was just very excited because my my goal, my the reason I was there with you guys is because my job was going to be head of content. I was going to be head of all media yeah. within Optic and I was going to write out the plans and and make, you know, make content the best it had ever been in Optic history. That's where my mindset was. And it, after it reached that moment, it was no going down. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't settle for anything less. I wanted, I wanted the optic videos to be node style, which are like, you know, like get four people, like basically what optic plays is today, but not fucking terrible. Yeah. No offense <laughs> to anyone doing those videos, Yeah, but that, and, and then, you know, incorporate i mean i had a whole poster board written out about it incorporate the best you know, i wanted formal and and royal two and karma and big timer to be on a team and play different games together once a week what's it called the goat the, the goat squad and then and like different or that wasn't there's was a bunch of different ones and I, yeah. I that's all i could think about all the time i wasn't i wasn't uploading at the time i was barely doing vision yeah because we were so focused on this and i was like hardly streaming yeah so and when i was streaming i was telling my chat which i probably shouldn't have been telling them yeah. about this yeah that, i was so excited about this yeah so that is all my all that's all i thought about and i don't know where you want to go from here so <laughs> so <sighs> jay moves down here before anybody else right and they they start working at the at the offices right down the street um I don't know when it was that we moved in or what, but I remember... Well, I got fired first. Is that what happened? I got fired. I was sitting in the CS house, yeah. Okay. Okay, so um, there, was a, there was a couple, couple of deliverables um, because there was also like a, a weird thing between the new management that was taking over and our old agents and mm -hmm. what was going on with sponsorship deliverables. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. There was like head-to-head -head there, definitely... I don't know. I, c I couldn't even tell you what was going on. Um, but I was still being put in charge of all of the deliverables. I was doing all the deliverables. I was editing vision and filming and uploading, like producing the whole series. I was also in charge of the podcast, the the podcast and the trivia videos and smooth comp. Smooth comp. I was in charge of everything. Yes. And, and and Aaron was there, and Aaron was always like, "What do you need me to do to help?" And I would tell him. But in charge, as, as far as it's coming from a direct source, it was me. Yeah. So we do the ping pong videos. I meet with Turtle Beach. It was fucking awesome. I was like, "This is what I want to do. I want to meet directly with yeah the sponsors with the sponsors yeah. and get them an awesome product." Yeah. And we did that with the ping pong tur uh, tournament, and then right after that, we did the um, the race to prestige on World War II, which also went really well. Yep. Um, then uh, there was also there was a scuff deliverable that was supposed to be done. I kind of talked about this a little bit in um, in around the bar. There was a, a scuff deliverable that was supposed to be done, and uh, it had to do with like Destiny Two or something. It was supposed to be a twenty four hour live stream. And uh, this is right after Seven came out. So Seven was the Vision, the uh, the Vision episode where the guys win COD champs. Okay. Vision uh. Seven comes out. The internet at the house had been terrible. Comcast had been like we we kept saying they were throttling us, mm -hmm. whether they were or not. I don't know. But we could we couldn't even stream Seven. And we tried it on three different computers. Then we ended up just uploading it. It was um, you know I was very upset. But while all that was going on. I was supposed to organize a 24 hour live stream for destiny two. And I kept saying the internet is bad. 
in the house. We can't stream it. We're going to have to think of something else. But then I would, I would, I had so much other stuff on my plate that I would go and do other things. And then it, I get a call the day before the 24 hours stream is supposed to go up. And it was, how are we looking on destiny Two stream? And I was like, well, there's no way we can do it. Like the, the internet is terrible. I think half of the content creators were gone and none of our heavy hitters were home. Big timer wasn't home. The COD team was all gone because they had just won COD champs. And so it would have been a stream with me, Bose, Mike, and Nick, which as we've seen on the optic channel, that's not, those aren't headliners, um, which I'm comfortable saying. I hope the, other, I don't think the other three will take offense to that, but it's just, that's not, what optics is supposed to do. We're supposed to have heavy hitters and then really good secondary people on mm -hmm. content. And then it, it became, I got hung up on and it was like, um, so from one end I was being, I guess like told, you know, like this was your job. It was your fault that all this stuff, like you didn't get, and now scuff is going to be upset, which I've talked to the scuff people many times. And I think they would have been understanding regardless yeah. of whatever was yep. going on. And then, on the other side, like the agency side, they were like, you did nothing wrong. It was other people's fault. So I'm being, you know, talked to on, on two different sides. But then I get a text um, from from Jay, like, like uh, three days later, saying that I'm not right for the position for head of content. And that, um, you know, that I'll have, I'll, re I'll, I'll be, I'll report to somebody that will be head of content. Um, and then I don't know if this is too early, but I find out later that the person that I reported to was a part, was originally a part of this deal from day one. So I don't know if I was, I always, I always said that I think that I was never even considered, considered for that part because that guy, he was there the whole time. Like he was, he was a part of, he was going to be president of no scope regardless of whatever yeah. happened, which ended up being the position. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I got fired. Then I don't hear about anything for three months about what's going on um, until we move down here. So that that was my story leading up to the departure of the Scuff House. Well, you know, those those are all hints as that I was seeing that I was just like, and I remember like Jay and I fighting as as all this was it was was happening because they were making decisions without telling me, and I was I was like. I'm like what I'm like we can't we can't do things like this. We can't do things like this. Right. This is not how we 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 do things. And then, you know, we we would get into this like massive argument over the phone Jay and I. Yeah. And then you know, either he would call me to apologize or I would call him to apologize. It was, you know, it was we were still, you know, trying to trying to figure this whole thing out. Yeah. And I remember saying like I remember <laughs> I remember saying I remember saying things to him like I'm like yo this is this is this is not gonna go right, right. If, if we start off if we start off wrong now it's never it, it's gonna be too late by the time we try to correct it yeah. it's just gonna be too late and little by little I would see like I would say you know this guy would be perfect for this position you know people that I trust personally in the scene in the scene to run the optic vision the way that it, it was supposed to be right you know. Um, and for the longest time we had preached how different optic and phase were from everyone else. It was very, we're, we're core oriented. We're not run like a business. We content is first We're I mean, I still think it's true to this day that optic and even with, even with the hit we've taken, we're still a content, we're still a content team first and phase is an entertainment and content team first and that's not to say you can't be fans of our esports teams because we're fans of our esports teams yep. and we appreciate it when people are fans but we would not have gotten where we are today without content and still the best the best parts of our organization throughout the history of it prior to me all revolve around content rather i mean it was awesome that the guys won e-league season two but also that vision banged and yeah. it was awesome to watch it was awesome to watch them go through all of their turmoils you know and and with picking up shazam his laugh coming to the house him getting dropped we find mixwell's this random guy then they fall in love with mixwell then we get Tarek, and it's all all of that story leading up to e-league imagine if you wouldn't been able to tell that would e-league would e-league season two have been no that 
great. Now without the backstory. With without in in Crossroads, whenever Lethal sat down, would we have cared if we didn't see everything that went in, all the ups and a lot of downs of the Halo team with Mike and Nick? Would 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 TJ sitting down have been that big of a deal? And it's like those are the most important parts of. And I, mean, I could be biased because I yeah. love content, but those are the most important parts of the optic story are the content portions. Yeah. So that was, it was very, we were very adamant in saying we are an East, this is an, this is an entertainment organization that is in esports. Yeah. And I thought we all understood that. And I mean, that's what, that's what we pitched. Right. You know, when we were getting investment, we are a media company that happens to be really, 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 really good at esports. But that is that is what helps feed and communicate with 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 uh, with the green wall with our with our fans, right. you know. Um, but little by little, like when I was saying, you know, this person, and they would hire somebody else, and they would say this person's better for this position. They would hire somebody else, and this that. I was thinking in my head several things, right? I'm like, don't allow this dude to hire all these people that are gonna they're gonna support him and only right. him, okay. Yeah. You, we have to have some people on our side, you know, to that. And this is me talking to, talking to Jay. And we have to have some people on our side just in case thing goes the wrong, you know, the wrong way. Because we're, we're – because even though we haven't moved on there, I've seen certain decisions and I've seen certain things that, yeah. that are happening that I am not okay with. Right. The, the, the way that it was announced, for example, the way that like all these situations just, just like, immediately made me not regret it. Because even to this point, I don't regret – you know what I did. Right. Does it bother me? Is it annoying? Sure, but yeah. I would do it all over again, except for the one thing that I would say I would still do this, because yeah. you know when, when I said, "Oh my God, we're gonna have money, investment money, to do whatever to do whatever we want." <laughs> What's what we thought? Okay. Could you Not, imagine? I don't have to be. I don't have to be responsible for saying, "Okay, we're getting X amount from from Turtle Beach." How does that fit into right. the overall budget? Who needs a raise? Who needs to get rewarded? Who needs to get paid? What uh, the house bills? That, like all of this, I didn't have to deal with that anymore. Now it was time for me to sit back and create content. You know, right. how, the way that I started my YouTube channel, creating content. Creating content, that's that's what I that is what I want to do. And I'm like, oh my God, this is gonna be the greatest era of optic. We're about to create the most compelling, most ahead of its fucking time content that, that we did. And you know, and we 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 <laughs> didn't. And and uh and I remember walking in for the first time ever. when did you did you guys move in at the same time I did? Was well, that was it around the same time? I came down one last time after being fired and shot the dota announcement um and mm -hmm. when i came down you know this is the first because like those were the, me getting fired and all that stuff that wasn't really red flags it was yeah. more of like i i felt terrible i i felt sad i went through like like three days i was like this is like i didn't know this was my dream job until it became available and then in two months time it all went away and i was like i was very very sad um and it was just like staying in my room, not really doing much. And um, then I went. I still had a, I still had vision to do, so I went to uh, um, to to interview the Dota team down here for their announcement video. And that's when I first met Reed, who was president of No Scope, mm -hmm. a really 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 awesome guy. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I I go and and I that's the first time I had I saw the offices. Is I I walked into what was called Launchpad City. Did we walk in at the same time? I don't think so. No, no, definitely not. Because I would have looked at you. I walked in, and the first thing I the first thing I saw was the Allegiance flag. So did I. It was the very first thing. It was. It That's was, what I'm saying. I think we walked in at the same time. No, because you walked in. I remember you walking in and pointing directly at it. Yeah. Said, what the fuck is that? That's yeah. what you said. Yeah. <laughs> so I walked in, saw the Allegiance flag, and I was immediately confused because. At this time, all we knew, all I knew, was the office. Uh, you know, uh, was was, the, was going around to skyscraper buildings talking about optic offices. And now I'm on the the bottom floor of of a, a cement. Yeah, of a I sarcophagus <laughs> of like an office building. Yeah, and you know, there's cubicles everywhere, and there's an allegiance flag on the wall, and and the the. I mean that that was those were all red flags, but then there was also like seventy people 
with optic gear on or allegiance or I think obey at the time. I don't know if obey was there yet, but like 70 people that I had no idea who they were. Mm-hmm. No, no clue. Yeah. And I was just like, what the hell is going on? Like, I, I was so confused more than anything. Yeah. And I knew I was down there first and the rest of the, co- the I know the, co- the, the content creators are coming down. They're going to be pissed because they're kind of diva, diva ish. Yeah. As all content creators are. And then the COD team was going to come down and they're even more of divas. And they had a right to be upset in this situation yeah. and i knew i knew the second i walked in that that shit was not going to be good shit would i the first thing i thought was a lot of this is going to have to change and yeah. it's going to work and none of it ever changed i remember so, walking in yeah seeing the allegiance flag and i pointed at it, i'm like, what the fuck is that why is there another team's flag in my offices right why right right because up until the point they hadn't told me that they were going to pick up all these other teams for whatever fucking reason. Right. Now, you know, as, as, as we continue to talk, this is my experience, how I experienced it. Okay. This is, yes. this is me telling you guys what I experienced, my facts. And I walk in and I, and I, and I, and I look at Jay and I'm like, what the, and he's like, you just did that. And I was just like, no, yeah. I need an explanation as to what the fuck this is. Right. And immediately, 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 like, it's it started sort of becoming this this thing right and i see all these people and immediately i'm just like oh, we don't need this many people right we don't for Obviously. what right right <coughs> and i didn't see it like we don't need these fuck i saw it as like oh my god these right. people are are setting themselves up for something bad you know what yeah. i'm saying and what happened you know eventually they, a purge happened. Yeah, yeah, a purge happened. And that is unfair and that is wrong Yeah, for people to lose their jobs. Right. People that moved here to, oh my God, don't get me started. Okay, yeah. so let, let's, not, let's not fast forward. So that was one of the first things. And then I, I, I remember going in there every day and thinking, yeah, this isn't what I, what I signed up for. So little by little, I stopped going in. Little by little, I start, you know, yeah. sort of. I wanted to develop relationships with you know with the people that worked there, but I couldn't because there were so many, goddamn many of right. them. And then as I was as I was getting the tour by Jay, because Jay moved here before, and that's why we would get into fights. He's like, "Dude, you just gotta be here and you gotta experience what's happening. It's so cool, blah 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 blah. You just have to be here to yeah. do that." And I'm like, "I don't." I, in my head, I'm like, "I don't think so. Right. I don't think I'm gonna be okay with the decisions that are being made, yeah, or, or whatever." But I still came, you know, I just, I, we bought the house and shit. So we move in and I walk in, I saw the Allegiance flag. And then I find out that we're sharing the floor with uh, PVP, PVP Live, PVP yeah. Live, rest in peace. RIP. Um, and I'm like, I'm like, well, okay, I, this isn't how you build an esports business. This isn't the way that this thing goes. Yeah. And I, and I sat down with them and I'm like, we need to be players and content creators first. Everybody else can work from their fucking house. We don't need people here yeah. to do what it is that they're doing. We right. don't need that. Um, and we then didn't need, I, we didn't need a seven person graphics team to clock in every day whenever we, you know, you built the biggest esports organization, you know, with graphic, like regular graphic designers yeah. doing stuff. Those. You know, yeah, dope shit. Zob and uh, Alpaca and, and Aaron and, and Aaron, yeah, been doing shit for five years. Yeah, so, so one of my one of my biggest pet peeves there was um, what was that called? The Simon and and Markel's thing. Just social. They they referred to it as social. Is that what their department was? Yeah, social and design. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I would walk. I, I walked in there, and that was that was my biggest pet peeve the biggest annoyance in my world when people were telling me about optic yeah when people would tell me about optic there was one time Mm -hmm. there was one time where we were on a phone call with um i think riot or somebody i don't even remember but i remember somebody asking like what's the green wall and i'm not gonna say who right but it was somebody that wasn't an optic had never been an optic maybe knows about optic but not enough to talk about what the green wall is and he started it off with like, well, the green wall is is us, the team and, and <sighs> what we represent, and we are an unstoppable force. I literally wanted to I 
after that meeting, I hung up. And I'm like, he's never ever talking about optic ever again in front of anything. In front. And I got so mad. Yeah. Because who who doesn't just like the person didn't know who Big Timer was? Right. Who doesn't know that Greenwall is the fans? Yeah. Who doesn't know that? You know, and the fact that people were allowing that shit to be okay right. that pissed me off even more. And it's like you can't. I mean, I, it's it's a sticky situation because do you blame that guy for saying all no that stuff, or do you blame the fact that he was hired allowed? First, yeah. Yeah. No, no, like how was he hired and how did he get into a call with Riot? How, if it was Riot, it was, I don't or, know, I don't remember, whoever. Somebody along those An lines. interviewer. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Right. But it, in that situation, either Jay had to answer that or I would have answered that. Right. Exactly. But neither of us did because I literally was just sitting there observing to see what this new dynamic was. Yeah. And I'm like, he's going to answer that. No, and then this other dude answers. And I just fucking, I, I got so mad. Yeah. You know, because Rightfully so. because then they continue to go down the route of picking people up out of fucking nowhere. Yeah, just picking people up out of nowhere. Right. Content creators and and and, and teams, teams. And I was just employees. Yeah, I was just mind blown, and I'm like, this is not the way that, that we're going to be able to do this. Right. So that's okay. We don't. Optic is not a place where you you go to Reddit and you say, hey, we're hiring. Optic is not a place where you go on Twitter and say, hey, we're hiring. That is not what Optic was. Right. Okay. We handpicked people that we knew was going to do that. We knew that they understood what Optic was. And I did. And, 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 for, and I mean this. And you can go back in my vlogs where Pam and I were talking. You, you know, I always said, I'm like, we are going to hire, you know, some people from the green wall. You know, right. they know Optic as good as everybody knows. And they would love nothing more than to be. None of that. Right. Okay. And the people that did, there was, I think, I can think of two that got hired that did know about the Green Wall that hated their lives when they, they hated the whole experience. Yeah. They hated it. Disappointing. I mean, it was disappointing yeah. for them because that's not what they signed up for. Right. Because they signed up for a fun, loving, phase esque type thing that you were talking about where it's just a lifestyle and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's fun. And instead, they got a desk job where they have to be in at 10 and they have to, they have to clock in at 10, they have to clock out at 6. They get a lunch break, and they get paperwork and all that. It yeah, is, it's it was unbelievable. So I remember the day that the Counter Strike team came in, and everybody else was like with the new contracts, and I was just like, I don't know what's in them. You should read them. You should always read what's in there because right. they were like, dude, what the fuck is this? Like, yeah, seventy two page yeah. contract when mine were like fourteen at top. Yeah. Simple shit. Seven, I remember that when that you was the baseline contract that all yeah the players when, got from when my you, understanding. When you have a, a contract this big, there's like there's scream sketchy. It's it's scream scre sketchy. there's something hidden in there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I'm not saying I'm not I'm not, not saying even, that there was or anything. Not even Tifu would sign that. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyway, so I like I remember when uh, I I don't have I have a vivid memory of the shit that pissed me off where I knew that shit was going south. Okay, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if you want to talk about every single scenario, but uh, interject when you can. But one of the things, one time, I was walking down the aisle, and I was walking, and I remember looking up in at, at a at a at a board where they had all the designs for new merch. Right. You know when they said it's like yeah, you know third label, we're gonna drop some shit called brick by brick. I'm like that's dope. Yeah. That's so dope. That's ill. Nice. Good job. But that those th there was there was a jersey. Yeah. There was a jersey on the fucking board. Right. Okay. And I'm like, oh, cool. What is, is that? Is that what is that? Is that League of Legends? Because I understood that League of Legends was gonna have to get their own shit. Right. They're like, no, no. This is this is gonna be the new thing. This is gonna be the 2018. So I'm like, we dropped the 2018 said November of 2017, like we have for the past 10 years. That you're not you're not throwing that. Right. And he's like, yeah, it's just that we're we're gonna own the rights to this one because we don't own the rights to the other one where you know this other merch company owns it. And I'm like, no, I own everything. Right. We're going to keep this jersey for the remainder of the year, and that's that. And then he's like, oh, you, you know, I'm being told other otherwise. And I'm like, but I'm yeah. I'm the boss. Right. Okay? Yeah, yeah. I don't care who's above you on, on, on a chart. You know what I'm saying? Chart, I yeah. built this shit. Right. Okay? You listen when I fucking say something's going down. Yeah. I didn't say it like that, you know, obviously. but it, I don't think you'd said it very much less like that well, i'm sure it was a lot like that <laughs> so so i'm like i'm like okay so I, I go to i go to jay and i'm like i'm like yo they're breaking culture 
you're breaking culture. You really, he's like, who cares, man? This is new, blah, blah. And I'm, the second he said, who cares? I was like, okay. Listen, what, where, right. where's, where's my voice? Where, where are you to carry what, you know, right. you were supposed to? You thought it was more of a collaborative effort, no, more of a team based thing. No, I just thought that culture was going to be like, I, I, the reason that I chose to step back was to create content and have fun. Right. Without the worry of of spreadsheets and without the worry of any of that bullshit. Yeah. Okay. But I also knew that a buddy of mine of twelve fucking years, yeah. who understands, who I thought understood what optic was and what you know it ended up becoming, that he was going to be able to sit there and say, "What do you think?" Or I, to be honest, I just thought that he was going to be able to run with it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe once in a while, I'll be like, "Yo, what do you think of this?" I, that's what I thought. Right. But very the second that he said, it's like, "Who cares?" I, I immediately knew. I'm like, "Okay, you don't understand culture." The, us releasing a jersey every year for the last you know ten years, like nobody was doing that. Every I mean, some teams to this day have the same jersey that they've had from the beginning. Right. Respect to them. I appreciate that. That's culture. Right. I respect it. Yeah, they'll do certain drops where it's different. I understand. I respect it. But it wasn't an accident. I didn't come up with it and say, oh, we should. It, it was deliberate. Right. It was deliberate because we were creating culture. It was deliberate to have white championships to be only worn on Sundays and only for the players. It, it, it was mind-blowing to me that that quickly, within three months, that you know, culture was being thrown out the window. Yeah. <clears throat> I couldn't wait to figure out what the fuck was going on. I needed to talk to somebody and and say and and, and I couldn't because who was there? Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I was getting a tour. I was getting a tour of of where the players were going to play, where people were going to stream from. Yeah. And I was mind blown that they thought that that was going to be a thing. When a simple question that says, "Hey, do you think this is going to work?" to anybody, to anyone in the world, to anybody, to anybody that's <laughs> a content creator, and, yeah, to anybody that's a creator and, and is an optic, that that was going to be that, yeah. right? No, I got shown this tiny little office. Yeah, this is going to be the Call of Duty room. I'm like, yeah, the fuck is not. Right. I'm not putting my call it my cool Call of Duty team in this. Right. That day, which was. I don't know, call it mm, February. Yeah. Because March was the last time Jay and I like exchanged tax. March of 2018 or something like that. Call it February. I said, I'm not putting my call. And in, in, in that that day, I called my my real my realtor and I said, I need an office space. I need this, uh, whatever. Yeah. Th- since then, I've been looking for a place like this. Right. And, and and I knew that I was going to have to use my own money. Yeah. Because their vision, the, the, their money was allocated for their vision a certain way. Right. Okay. Now, through all of this, you know, there's there's this super super massive disconnect between Chris Cheney, Jay, who were like two, they, they, they two together were the group, were right? The, yeah. Where they saw things differently. They thought that that scaling fast and quick was going to be the way to go. There, it seemed it seemed like the goal was to do what we had said shouldn't be done, which was slap the optic logo on everything and watch it grow, which isn't possible. We've seen. It's, I mean, it's how it is with every team, even even content based teams. Us, hundred thieves face, hundred thieves can't just slap a hundred thieves logo on somebody and they grow. No, you have to. It's a collaborative effort. They join the team, they become a part of the culture, and then you watch their numbers go up. You can't just slap an optic logo on seven international teams and think that that gives any more value to the organization Mm -mm. if anything that sets yourself it sets the organization up for more opportunities to be involved in failure do you know do you know the reason why they the the reason they told me as to why we picked up obey and the way that or why we picked up a lot a lot allegiance alliance allegiance allegiance yeah who mind you i like i like uh julian at obey right Okay, and I like the allegiance it's, guys. It's another situation. It's another Reed situation yeah. where it's not Reed's it's fault. Not it's Reed's not Reed's fault. Yeah, Bay's fault. It's not Allegiance's fault. Yeah, it's 
how it all came yeah. to be. And, and, uh, and I remember like walking through one day, I, I was walking out of my office and I saw a whole bunch of names on the board. And I'm like, what is this? And then some some dudes like, oh, this this uh, potential new optic candidates. I'm like, the. F-. Yeah. I was like, I was like, all right, I don't care, I'm out. I, I I I've had enough. I'm not gonna sit here and argue. You guys are gonna go do your thing. I can't tell you, or I could, and I did. I could tell you what the future looks like if we go down this route, right? Or you can just do you it. You can't because it got to a point where myself, I know, I know this is true for me, and most likely, definitely true for you. I, I know for a fact it's us two, probably other people as well, that everything they came to us with, we basically said that's a terrible idea. And it became like, well, they're just going to hate anything we bring yeah. to them, which isn't the case. There, yeah. was, there were some great things going on. There were some good things going on in Engage. There was some okay things going on in GGEA. There, some No. But it was just like... It was like it wasn't a we just say no to everything because we're being difficult. It was you, this is not a good idea. It's mm-hmm. not a good idea. And if you do it, you're going to find out why it's not a good idea. Then they did it. It wasn't a good idea. And then for in my case, they blamed me for saying it wasn't going to be a good idea in the first <laughs> place. And that happened like three times for me. I remember – uh, I don't want to get too ahead of, ahead of myself, but from my, can I talk about my point of view now? For, yeah. So for me, I moved down here, knew I wasn't going to uh, talk to Reed, became close with Reed. And then I was like, okay, so Reed's a cool guy. We're going to be able to get along. He's looking out for my best interest. This is going to be fine. It's basically as if I have his job, yeah. just, not his, pay, just yeah. not his paycheck. And then I asked, I was like, hey, um, is there any way I can get an office if I'm going to be doing all this stuff? Yeah. And they basically said, no, you have to work in the bullpen. In the bullpen. And at the time, there was a uh, a feud going, not a feud, but... Um, Power struggle. Jay didn't really struggle. know Jay didn't really know Aaron that well. Mm-hmm. The only thing he knew about him was that he lived in the house. Mm-hmm. And then Aaron... I still don't know Aaron that well. Right. I'm just <laughs> not kidding. a lot of people do. <laughs> and then Aaron didn't get... Um, wasn't getting like very good salary because he kind of like weaseled his way into the scuff house. So... I was like, bro, you should start uploading. And that was when Proofy was in the house. Everyone was uploading. He uploaded a video. Brisk didn't like it. Then J- uh, Jay came in as soon as that happened. And so there was like a weird thing between Aaron and Jay because Aaron had made this video that Brisk didn't like. He ended up stop uploading, stop doing everything. So the first thing that Reed said to me is, I don't know how I feel about this Aaron character. Yeah. And I was like, like you're talking, I've been friends with Aaron since he was and diapers. Yeah. <laughs> That's not true. Yeah. But his internet diapers. I've been I've been friends with him since he since he stopped going to school to pursue this. We ran Optic Intel mm-hmm. together. Like you can't like I I know you don't understand who you're talking to because yeah. you wouldn't have said it if you did. Yeah. And he said he, he had his own office and he said, I'm putting Aaron right there. And he pointed outside of his office to a bull, to the bullpen, which is the yeah. where Jim sits in the office. And yeah. he had Michael Scott's office and he said i'm putting aaron right there and i was like this is not gonna go well no i was because in 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 our in in, i feel like it's not ridiculous for us us to say this me and aaron have a a really aaron and i had a really good like uh, a big part in providing many of the jobs that they have Mm -hmm. like why would you why would you be president of a content side of our organization if we hadn't built up content to begin with you know you should I feel like there should be respect for myself, for Aaron, for Scum, for Nature, yeah. for you. There should be respect for all of that because we built it up. It shouldn't – the first thing you say to me about Aaron shouldn't be, I'm putting him right there. Reed had never met Aaron. Mm-hmm. So where did Reed get that information from of why Aaron is this – We don't know. That's what I'm saying. Is like there was already the very, very disrespectful tone. I wasn't provided an office – I was, I was, I'm assuming, oh, I was supposed to share an office with another guy that they had just hired who I had never met, didn't know who he was. He was editing the Outlaws videos and they were already doing like knockoff Hot Ones videos and, and knockoff like mean tweets stuff. And I was like, why am I sharing? Yeah. I, I was very confused about the whole situation and I felt disrespected. You gave me your office, which I was very grateful for, but it was still, I thought, I was told moving out of the scuff house that I was going to have the same exact job that I had, but just with more resources. That was the sentence that kept being said to me. 
is that that was the job that I would have. And then it turns out I get down there, I am uh, supposed to go in, clock in at 10, clock out at six, mm-hmm. have a lunch break. That makes no sense. And and I was completely separate yeah. from all the people that I had lived with, all the content yeah. creators, comp- and and you with optic in your name, with optic in my name. I think that's that, that's like another cultural thing where they they didn't get it. You know what I'm saying? There's there's people in right. optic, and you're there to support them. Okay. Yes, because we work together, we're going to be friends. Right. And a lot of the people there, cool ass people. Yes, still you know? cool people. So you know, some st- are still cool people. Yes. But I just couldn't understand how they didn't understand that if you have optic in your name, it means something. It means something. Yeah. I, the, I, I'm not them letting just anybody in. And no offense to the people that they did let in without me knowing. Right. Like Ralph, for example. I call him my stepchild because I didn't pick him up. But, you know, I like him for what it's worth. <laughs> right. And, you know, whatever. Say with Sheila. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. Sh- yeah. Pterodactyl, it, it, it's, too. It, I feel like we got pretty lucky because every other – I remember I, you called me whenever I was living in an apartment by myself – you called me and said, what you, what you said about making a documentary series is a good idea, but the first things first, I have to check with the guys. You went, you asked them, they said yes, then you let me into the house. Yes. Same with the pomage thing. You asked the guys. That's, I'm assuming, that's always how the optic thing had yes. gone down. Group decision. Yeah. Always. Because no, no one's above being the best. I mean, even me. Okay. Right. And I hate to say this. <laughs> Sometimes my ideas aren't – well, some ideas aren't that great. Right. But I, it's not – the ideas to me are just like an extension of everything that we've already done and just, you know, thinking what would work. And right. then I would go, I was like, yo, what do you think? You think this is work? Like in, in, in what other organization do you think that they're going to grab their, their, their camera guy as a stance and then take them, take them with to pick places? Nowhere. The managerial people are going to go and pick a place and then not give a shit about anything else and then they figure it out. Not right. me. I, I Everything that I did was like, all right, how does this fit into the content? Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, and we had gone, I mean, I think the reason you did that is because we had gone everywhere. Like we had gone to all the different esports events together. We, that you, you were a face of vision. I was shooting vision. We needed vision to come out for Gears, for COD, for CS. So we went everywhere together and yeah. we knew optic yeah i think we knew optic better than anyone well that's a fact right still to this day still to this day so so that's i mean that's why that's what i mean and i was under the assumption that's why i was so i was like i've been so loyal this whole time like i i i mean still to this day even how much you know i've changed over the past year is i want what is best i want to i want to give the fans a story that they signed up for yeah and I mean that's, that's still how it is. It just it just hasn't hasn't been that way for a bit. Anyway, so we walk in one day, <laughs> and I I told Pomage I have my camera because yeah. I was trying to prove I'm like guys this isn't a, a good working environment for the content creators for for two reasons okay and and I know a lot of people out there who work in esports are going to disagree with this whatever. In my opinion, you couldn't have had, you know, the people that are there to work to do the boring shit that isn't creating the content or isn't going places, traveling, being in videos, being liked, popular on the internet, you know, all that. If I'm going to a place like that and my job is to check boxes to make sure that sponsorships just that, all right? And then you see a couple of kids walking in smile ear to ear who are there for only one hour to do something fun and then get the fuck out to go do more fun shit. Right. If I'm sitting there eight hours a day and this is not what I signed up for, this is not what an a sports organization in my mind is for, yeah. and you're literally sitting there just pressing things and I see somebody walk in, I'm going to resent them. Yes. I'm going to resent myself. I'm going to resent my situation. I'm not going to be, I'm going to be so, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think to myself, some people are going to think to, to themselves like, I want to do that. Why? I can't do that. Why? What am I doing here? What? I'm, right. I got to start, you know, whatever. And then you're going to start vlogging in the offices, hoping to get somebody, you know, that never happened because we made it. I told them, you got to tell them this. Yeah. Anyway, I tell Pamash, Pamash, go in this room right here, go in this <laughs> office and then scream as though you just hit a collat or whatever's cool in montages. <laughs> I grab my camera and then I point it towards the bullpen. Yeah. At the top of this lock, he's like, Fuck yeah. And then everybody, bro, like everyone. It's like the, the, people were coming out, of, like peeking their heads out the office. Right. And I'm like, 
that's why. We're interrupting with our right. bullshit. People need to work and because they need to support the team. Right. It's not gonna work. And I remember I remember Spratt telling me he was like, Yeah, they they asked me if I could if if it would be cool to have a setup there, like on the in the in the bullpen. Yeah. And I he was like, I laughed. Because he what Spratt, I remember Spratt, he what he wanted to do was have a place to go. He yeah. which is what I do here, which I love. He wanted a place to go work and then go home and relax. And he thought the offices were going to be that, which yeah. we all kind of did. And he said that as soon as they said, do you want to stream? We could have a setup, a PC at this bullpen. He was like, are you like, he laughed because he thought it was a joke. Yeah. And then he realized they were being serious. He was like, well, I guess I'm playing from home. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then they promised him a visa and never got it to him. But that's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just a long line of just, misstep after misstep after misstep yeah. I, 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 I and so i mean like what you were just saying where you kind of i mean this was at, this is probably the lowest point of 2018 for me it was like january february of 2018 um because aaron and i aaron and i were still we were still working we probably did it for like a month and a half we were still going in um at 10 leaving at 6 which we we didn't do we, I mean, we didn't do it very often because we hated it so much. But we, for the most part, we would go in at 10, get our work done, then play Mario Kart in your office. And then that, for the most part, like Aaron and I felt like we were the only we were the only core. We were the only team that had each other's back because how you said that other people felt about the content creators. That's how Aaron and I felt. We would watch Bose come in. We would watch Nick come in. And it was like I lived with these people for so long and I despised them whenever they came in. Because Nick and Bose, I, first of all, um, without getting into it, my contract was a lot less than I thought it was going to be, a lot less than I promised. Um, so was Aaron's. I mean, we we didn't we didn't have lawyers. To, we didn't know anything about it. We, we didn't really push back as hard as we could have. We could have pushed back a lot harder. And so I didn't receive an increase in salary, even though I thought I was going to. With a, you, you, you hear about all the money that's coming in, and you're not seeing any of it in your – you know, in your lane, you're not seeing any of it in content. And then you're seeing, you know, f they're, they're picking up other organizations that aren't helping optic. And you're like, where is all this money going? It's not going to us. I wasn't trying to be greedy, but it was just like, I, I would see, I, I didn't receive any financial, you know, gain from the whole thing. Um, and then I would, you know, see Bose and Nick walk in. They just landed. They just got an ax deal handed to them from, yeah. from them. And I'm just, I, I I'm looking at my best friends like family who i consider and i'm like pissed all yeah. the time angry sad and and depressed that i'm going into a job and and wondering how this all happened um and and that's how it was i wasn't on, I, and i don't even think the content creators knew this i wasn't at a good place with them because none of them had my back none of them said what the hell is hitch doing there why is hitch what they none of them helped me i would complain to them and they'd be like damn that like really sucks and so we, Aaron and I got into this, this mode where we were just like pissed all the time um, or sad or just like, what the fuck is going on? Um, I mean, there was many times where I would drive, I would drive Aaron on the way to work and I would, I would literally like scream at the top of my lungs, like how pissed I was and, and say some shit that if it ever got posted online, my career would be ruined and shit like that. So, <clears throat> um, so, so then we know that this isn't working. We, we, we don't have the, the biggest questions that kept being asked was I was, you know, for the longest time I was explaining to read everything that was optic. Yeah. And, you know, Reed has another business on the side yeah. that is his main business. Yeah. And then he, he was president of no scope and no scope was dealing with obey content, alliance, allegiance content, outlaws content and optic content. And League of legends content. And League of legends content. Yeah. And so, he has so much on his plate yeah. and while he has all this stuff on his plate, I'm trying to tell him what's going to be, what's going to work in optic. And he's not, he, does, he can't understand it because he, he didn't know. Who, I mean, at the very beginning, he didn't know who big timer was. He kept calling karma Damien. Yeah. Like he does. He very obviously doesn't yeah. understand and it's not his fault, no. but for the longest time, Aaron and I resented him for it. Yeah. So, and, and, and I was always like, <laughs> I'm like, Reed's cool. Right. And, and the way that I always like, sort of understood Reed is because I know who he was. 
Right. You know, and he's managing these people who get a hundred million views a month huge, by themselves. Huge YouTubers. And here we are who together don't do ten. Right. Bickering so, yeah. between each other. Yeah. So so I always thought from from his point of view, like, man, this guy cannot be having fun. There's no way. Right. There's no way. Um yeah, so I, I, I always, a lot of people, I was really quick to identify who were the people that I liked and who the fucking people See, that I I, I wasn't. That was the bad, I, I, I was very, like, there was a big thing going on where it was corporate versus content, mm-hmm. corporate versus optic, um, because the COD team has their own thing, the Gears team has their own thing, they, and noth, nothing is smooth, nothing went smoothly, and it was always seeming to be optic versus corporate, and I was, you know, I was a big part of that, I there was there was very few people where I saw them and I was like not, I guess like my heart didn't sink because I hated going to work. I locked myself in your office, which I probably shouldn't have done. Aaron and I have talked about it. We probably shouldn't have locked ourselves in there, but we just felt disrespected beyond belief. I felt like loyalty meant nothing. We weren't provided any anything. Our content was getting content was getting no budget. We had no place. I, I, w- I would write out different plans to fix it. I, I wrote out different. We could use those tiny little rooms yeah. for different things, but they are insisted that you know each room was assigned to a team. Mm-hmm. And then I would say, the COD team's not going to practice there, and I can promise you that. And they wouldn't believe me. And I'm like, I've known these guys forever. Like, they're not going to... Why would they drive here? Why would... like You know where Seth's going to probably end up living? You know where... Krim's going to probably end up living. Why would they inconvenience themselves to come play out of an office? Like it, it just didn't make sense uh, to me. And I, I felt like we, we, and we, we sat down, we had a meeting. I invited everybody, um, all the content creators. And I said, Hey, um, this isn't, this isn't going well. And, and um, we, we need more budget. Um, we need to, to get, we need a, uh, a timeline of when all the players are going to get down here from different teams, and and we uh, we need more people because it was just myself and Aaron still doing all the optic content after we were promised all these re- resources yeah. because everyone else that was under no scope was involved with all these other deliverables that they had to do, and that meeting turned very hostile, and so at that point I I I pretty much knew I was like this. It, it wasn't a, what do you, I mean, what do you need? What do you, what do you need in order to make this successful? It was, you can't tell me what to do because you're, you're not a content creator. Cause I was talking what's best for content creators. Yeah. You're not a content creator. You don't get paid to be a content creator. You're an employee. And it was, um, you don't know what it's like to, to build out this, this many companies. You don't know what it takes and I was just, and and I was very taken aback by it because I was, I was like, this isn't, I'm not saying what I'm asking. I am. Asking. I would have been like, how many companies have you fucking built? <laughs> That's what I would have. I'm right. like, I know that I haven't built any, but how many have you built? Show me what you have built. Right. It's what I would have asked. And then it got into a very toxic mentality where, you know, I would, I would see different people. I would see these people do, um, do interviews uh, with different news outlets talking mm. about how they had made it and they, 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 they've built this biggest thing. And, and I'm on the inside saying, this is a fucking shit show. Nobody knows what's going on. And I was, it was me and Aaron against the world at that point mm-hmm. because I, we weren't friends with anyone else. Um, and, and we thought everyone else was happy. But we didn't learn until months later that everyone else is going through the same thing that we're going through as well. So... It was it was a very very toxic definitely the the lowest point of my adult life was early 2018 and um, so then whenever we asked I mean we we asked for all that um, well, we asked for content space and we asked for more help and we asked to be a part of optic and not a part of no scope yeah and we were denied all of that and then then we were expected to make content. And the big question that kept coming to Aaron and I is when are the, when are the computers going to get here from the CS house? You had bought all these CS computers. So that was the biggest thing is like when, when are the, when are the, and instead of buying new computers, it was like, when are the computers going to get here? And I was like, I'm not in charge of the moving van. I don't yeah. know. And everything was being put on Aaron and I to, we had to, we had to build the optic play set up ourselves. And then when we said, 
no to that because we wanted to hire people to make a dope room. Yeah. That was, I mean, that was also, that was part of the reason why Aaron ended up inevitably getting fired. <clears throat> and that, I think that was the turning point for you. I, I legitimately became a psychopath and I've talked about this m like multiple times, but Aaron, Aaron got fired. Um, he sat down in a room with Jay and Reed and they said, you have 30 days to get out. Um, you have to take optic out of your name and, um, you have to leave the apartment. And at the time he had never lived on his own. It was the first time living on his own. He yeah. had lived at the scuff house and the CS house. So they were expecting a 20 year old to move back to his, with his parents mm -hmm. in LA in under 30 days after just coming down. And while all this was happening, I was on a plane to Mexico to shoot vision for Mexico city. And when I landed, I got a call from my ex-girlfriend saying, just so you know, this just happened. And I turned into a fucking psychopath. Like I literally whited out. I was texting on the on the bed um, in the Mexico hotel as soon as I got Wi-Fi. And I was just like, they, I know for a fact they didn't do this while I was there because they know how much I would have freaked out. Yeah. Because I, I would have gone in breaking down walls. Like what, yeah. who the fuck do I need to talk to? Um, because me and Aaron built like built this like as the second half of optic as far as the nation channel is concerned that was us that was aaron and i and um it it just it just drove and then that's that's when that's when the content creators that's when they stepped in they were like we've got your back yeah. we can do this and i was like where have you guys been for four months we <laughs> I, I got a t i got a text from somebody in upper management and said hey uh you, you got to remove aaron from the from the group chat on my phone the optic group chat yeah and i was like no he's an optic he's like yeah but he's no longer with the company i'm like yeah but he's still an optic he may not be working for it but he's still an optic that still means something to me right. at least yeah therefore he's not fucking going anywhere and therefore he didn't go anywhere right. it, it was it was that simple you know what i'm saying um again you can have as many as many titles as you want yeah. in an organization but not in 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 a situation like this one. In optics specifically, that's not the way things work. Right. And um, so then when I get back from Mexico, I'm a uh, things had cooled down because of how hostile the group chat was with everyone involved yeah. in that group chat. Um, things had calmed down, and it was like a hey, we need to talk about this kind of thing. And I was like, yes, we fucking do need to talk about it. And um, that's when uh, I came back from Mexico. Um, I had a one-on-one. -on -one, um, and I was told that I was, you know, I would be a part of Optic. Aaron would be a part of Optic. And we would build out an eSport and an Optic media team that would, um, that would handle all Optic content. That's all it would be. They wouldn't be a part of No Scope. No Scope would have because No Scope had their plate full, mm -hmm. and we would move transition over to Optic, and we would just focus on Optic content. We would be provided a budget and a team. I wrote out my team: myself, Aaron, Muggsy, Amanda the Jedi, Roger, and then whoever Roger needed to pick up for documentaries because he was working with the legal, like on the League of Legends mm -hmm. side. That's who I wanted my team to be. I made a, I, I made the group chat. I put um, Blackbeard in it just to let him know that that was going on. And Ariel, and Ariel, uh, the guy who helped us with, um, or also was part of Optic Intel that Aaron's dropping his clothing line with now. Um, that was the team. Then um, I had already made the group. I told everyone that that was going to happen. Every, I, I asked them if they, if they were if it was a possibility. They said yes. And so I told everyone that they, because I, I was told that I had a team. I told all those guys they had a job in Optic. Many of those people fucking love Optic, especially Ariel, especially Amanda. M Muggsy as well likes Optic. And they this was an opportunity for them that they probably had always wanted. And then I got a call two days later that that's not happening anymore. Um, we either stay in no scope, do what we're doing, or, um, or they're going to transition Aaron and I to content creators and cut our salaries in half mm -hmm. <clears throat> and 
that's I there's no way I was going back to that hell that we had just come out of. So that's when we got dropped from um from optic content or or from no scope and that's when I made the around the bar video. <sighs> And why don't you say at the beginning, this isn't about hex because <laughs> you want me to fucking get into it because at the time people didn't know, man, people, know. people didn't know that because I don't think, I think you didn't make it public because you didn't want to accept it either. That a lot of what you were saying was being ignored and people were allowed to make decisions about optic without you, which is well, th think about it and yeah at the time at the time it was unfathomable yeah and now it's i mean now we've accepted it yeah but at the time it was like people so whenever i was making all these all these uh i, I told them exactly what happened without saying any names and because i didn't say any names yeah they assumed it was you yeah it's another that's why i said it's a tfue bank situation yeah people assumed that you were making all these decisions well, you know, from my standpoint, it's like I couldn't one because, like I said at the beginning of this, I'm not the guy to fucking you know go talk about it like right. that publicly. And I, and, and think about how it would have seemed that a, a decision that I supported fully, a decision that I benefited from fully, wasn't what I expected it to be. So that was yeah. a failure on my on my part that I was right. that I'm still to this day dealing with. Just because I don't talk about the things that I'm happy about, just because I don't talk about the shit that I've been doing, like doesn't mean that I'm sitting here just like taking it in the, you know, take, ma making that happen. Yeah. The amount of shit that we, how many times would you say we saved Infinite from um, the beginning? I can mean probably, f probably like four, four or five off the top of my head. Okay. We're only going to talk about the one. The one. The one where they wanted to drop the Call of Duty team. Because yeah. that to me would have been a definite like I, I, oh my god how do how do we begin so there was there was contract issues um, and it wasn't so much the contract or the players but it was more of the person that was representing the players that these people couldn't get along with right the they wanted to take they wanted to take Dan's hard work in getting us Chipotle getting us Pepsi getting us uh, a, a better deal with Turtle Beach. They wanted to take over that and say, "All right, thank you, Dan. See you later." No, no, no. Here you go. Right. It's just like we're taking over. Goodbye. Like you're fired, essentially. And Dan obviously said, so "Well, was it, what, were they a part of the deal at first? Did they experience what I experienced, where they thought they were coming down here? Yes, they thought they were going to be a part of all this. Yeah, because I told then, them that they were going to be a part of it. Because why would you get rid of the people who? who got you the biggest sponsorships who have delivered right. for you time and time again and who are not just bringing regular sponsorships they're bringing fucking chipotle and fucking pepsi yeah you know why would you get rid of them right <coughs> instead of figuring out a way to to, to, to do it with them, yeah now don't get me wrong you know uh, agents sometimes are very forward and and you know what they're supposed yeah. to be anyway because of that external factor that had nothing to do with the players they got to the point to where like you know what we don't even want to deal with that anymore so we're going to have to let them go. They sent the email. No, the hold email. on. <laughs> let me fucking tell you how yeah. that went down. Yeah, yeah. I go in there, and I was talking to, to Chaney and Jay, and they were talking about this. And I'm like, there's nothing to talk about. You, we, we're not dropping the Call of Duty team, period. And then I, I remember they're like, well, we can't deal with them because we have to deal with whatever other external factors are happening in this. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck. We're not dropping that team. If you drop the team, I'm leaving too. And if I leave, everybody else is going to leave too. Give me, this was a Friday around 5 o'clock. I'm like, give me the weekend. Let me talk to, to whoever I need to talk to to smooth shit over so we can continue down the path that we need to go down. Okay? Now, the second, uh, what was it? On, it was a Friday. On Saturday, I'm outside grilling. You know, my, my family's coming over. I'm grilling some arrachera, about to make some fire. I get a call from from a, from an agent, from their agent, the player's agent, saying, say, yo, what the fuck? What is this? And I'm like, what? He's like, look at the letter that I just got in the mail. And I'm like, what is it? I'm like, I don't got time. I got my hands full of shit. What, what is it? He's like, they're going to find a home for the Call of Duty players within the next two weeks. And I'm like, I, I seriously, my, my, my heart dropped. And I was like, 
I cannot believe that they're not even going to give me a chance to smooth. Tw- in, in, within 24 hours, not even 24 hours, they sent out the email to, 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 uh, to their agent. After you told them to wait. After I told them to wait until Monday. They didn't give a fuck. Uh, at that moment, that was the last time I talked to, to either of them up until recently. Right. Um, and the only person I'm, you know, I talked to is obviously Cheney. Yeah. Um, and I, I was like, I, I, I called them immediately, and I'm like, I'm like, you realize what you're doing, right? Like, this isn't, this isn't gonna work. Like, you're, you're dropping. You, I'm like, oh my god, no, you don't even, no, 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 you don't even get it. Okay, I've, I've, I, I did it wrong. Okay, right. let's on Thursday, the day before that Friday, that I went in there pissed off. I, ju- I landed on Friday from my fishing trip to Okeechobee with my brother. Right. I was fishing. I was about to say, I think you were fishing. And, and I get a call from someone that says, tell me it's not true. And I was like, what? He's like, tell me that you guys aren't serious about dropping the Call of Duty team. And I was like, no, what the fuck? No, this is fucking rumors. It's just, right. Somebody just stirring up shit. I'm like, No. And, and I'm like, what? And I repeat it to the, to the person. I'm like, what? You think we're going to get rid of a uh, of, of formal? Yeah. You know, a multi, multi plat, uh, multi-game multi champion? Crim6, the winningest player in Call of Duty history? Karma, the only... And then, I, you know, I went down the line to make sure that they understood the severity of the thing. Yeah. And I'm like, you think that I'm going to let go of my little brother, yeah. Scumpy, the biggest... One of the biggest esports personalities in the world? Carries nah. not only Optic on his back, but COD. Yeah. Like yes. A little, a little ginger. Yeah. I was like, no, there's no fucking way. But I'm like, but I was like this. I'm like, no, there's no fucking way. Actually, yeah. hold on a second. Okay. Hold on a second. Let me call you back. I hang up. I'm on my boat. Oh, I'm not my boat. I'm on somebody's boat. And I'm like, so I'm like, hold on, hold on. I call and I'm like, I'm like, yo, we're not getting rid of the Call of Duty team, are we? And there's like, yeah, you know what? Some things just aren't working out. And I was like, I was like, bro, we're not, we're not, we're not. Yeah. I'm like, it, it can wait. It can wait. So I'm like, all right. So I, I continue to fish. I get on my plane. My brother and I get on a plane. We come back and immediately walk into the offices. That's when I have that conversation. I'm like, what the fuck are we doing? We're not, we're not doing it. 24 hours later, as I'm in front of the grill, I get the call from, from, uh, from Dan. And then they tell me that. And I'm like uh no and immediately i got so mad you, and i sent out an email if i i don't i i have the email somewhere i i i read the email and the response and, and i remember like telling them step by step as to why what they're doing was fucked up right and then that's and then i told them i'm like if you guys proceed with this i'm i'm gonna leave and they're like finally finally that's what it's gonna take to get the guy out of the fucking way. Right. We need that to happen. We yeah. need to get him the fuck out of the... He's causing too much trouble. He's got too much power. Too much fucking influence. Right. Okay? Undeserved influence. Undeserved yeah. power. I, that was just given to me. Yeah. I didn't work for 10 years no. to get that. Just give it away. Twice they tried to get rid of me. Twice. With that. And the other thing was they wanted to offer me a project. I'm not going to talk about it, but... They they want they they dangled this thing the silver right. thing like you dude too. look at this there's fucking lots of money over here you can go do this and I'm like I play chess a couple of times you know like yeah. I I see you coming a mile away like this, this um I I help create this game that you're thinking you're playing with me so of course I entertained it just to see the full scope of it. You know, I wanted to see what it is that they were thinking. I ended up not obviously taking the bait. Right. And I continued to be a pain in their asshole for the rest of time. Yeah. Now, during all of this, time and time again, I try to offer advice, you know, I, you know, through through intermediaries because I wasn't talking to, to any of them. Um, but that one was the one. And I had people coming to me and they're like, well, we're if if that happens, we can't continue to do this, okay? From a business standpoint, like sponsors and I don't, you know, partners, you yeah, know, the yeah. people. They're like, if this happens, we we can't be a part of this, right? You know, like 
wh- people that understand optic more than the people running optic. Yeah. So, so it would seem. Yeah. So it would seem. So that ended up going down for uh, like a couple of. The, are you missing anything on your on your thing? Or are we? Um, oh wait. When did the Halo thing happen? Was that before or was that no, immediately Halo, after? Uh, from from my understanding, the Halo team. The tweet that said we have exited Halo, it was supposed to say we have exited Halo and Call of Duty. It was supposed to be the same no. time. So it was. It's this is all around the same. Yeah. Because I remember we went to fucking war. We went. <laughs> we went to some event. I think it was Seattle. I think it was Seattle. There was all this stuff. You know, you had bought a lot of time, but there was all this stuff still going on with COD. Where I remember they were talking about other. Like it was, it was the four of them, formal and you know all all the other, the other three. They were talking about different contracts that they, that different offers that they were about to mm-hmm. accept. Yeah. Um. And while all that was going on, we were. I remember we had blacked out Avies because as soon as the Halo team got dropped, um, we didn't. I didn't know about it, um, until well, I knew it was like Rocky, but I didn't know that they were literally just getting dropped until. Um, until PJ told us the day it was happening. And then they get dropped. Um, you black out your Avi. I black out. I, the rest of us black out. Um, which it was, was a rest in peace optic. Right. And um, and <laughs> Jack joins. <laughs> and then Jack joins in the middle. <laughs> but that was supposed to be. Um, that was supposed to be at the same time. Because um, I know. I know for a fact they were renegotiating or trying to get the most out of uh, either drop or get the most out of the gears guys, the halo guys and the cod guys because of the con they thought that yeah. console esports. You know, I guess we're talking about it, right? Uh, Cheney wanted to reverse that. Right. And yeah. he was advised not to. Wow. Okay. Because I, I know for a fact, um, PJ took the PJ took, took the first wave of negotiations. They don't have their agents. They were negotiating themselves. He said the, ne- negotiations, the negotiations were so absurd that he was just like, how is this even possible? He was like, I've been talking to Hex for two years. Give me Hex or give me Jay. Give me somebody I can talk to that understands. And they were told, no, you have to talk to the people we put in charge to be able to talk to. Mm-hmm. Then PJ gave up. They, you know, they get dropped. Then TJ puts out a twit longer that got so much attention that they were put back on the table to re- to be renegotiated. Yeah, and that was way after the, what I just said, though. Right. Oh, okay. To be renegotiated, and um, they had the roster lock was on Monday, and they tried Friday, Saturday, and Sunday to contact somebody to be put back on the table after they were told. Yeah, and no, there was no response. Well, no, people, people, <clears throat> people only work. Right, Monday through Friday. I forgot about that. Yeah. In fucking esports, in one of the first offices. things I t- one of the first thing I told them to do, I'm like, uh, when they said it's like, well, since their employees take forty hour weeks, so I'm like, okay, uh, their weekends are Monday and Tuesday. Right. Okay. They work Wednesday, Friday, uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, because in esports, who doesn't? Wh- when, are when are Sunday, tournaments? Right. When are tournaments? You know. Uh, so I feel like yep. Yeah, some people don't know the the infinite offices are closed on Saturday. Sunday. Yeah. The, well, look. I understand the need for you know for free time and personal time. Obviously, I have personal time. Everybody does. Everyone does. Yeah. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to pick people who understood that this. Although you're not going to be working eight hours straight. But you will work those eight hours throughout the day. You don't have to show up to work as long as you do that. Some people are good enough to finish their eight-hour work day in an hour. Yeah. Okay, as long as the job gets done, like who cares? And that's the atmosphere that you would have created that would have inspired people to really like get get shit done in a in a in a better way. Anyway, so oh man, the 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 whole culture there was 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 not right. Not understanding the fact that content comes first. Players come first. It's a it, it 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 is a misstep from the jump. Right from the jump. If you don't understand, which is weird to me because people there seem to be fixated on an org chart, depth chart, literally a roster depth chart. Yes. Who who are the starters? Who's yes. on the bench? They're yes. obsessed with it. And if you're so obsessed with that, 
and you don't understand where that little thing lies in the grand scheme of the pyramid, like that little thing, all that supporting group that we had of yeah. talented people, some of them, right. they were there to support the pyramid. They weren't there to be a part of the pyramid. They weren't there to insert them. No, no. You were there to support the pyramid. And if you are so obsessed with this org chart, yet you fail to understand where that org chart lies and why the reason that org chart is, exists, you're lost and you, there's nothing that I can do for you, right. unfortunately. So many people are obsessed with climbing up the ranks of the company that they didn't realize that the company was decreasing. Like, it was it was bombing and that's what we had told them was going to happen um and so i mean just to skip all right one thing um is that so i i completely leave content um that's when you know the the day after i'm gone from content i make my around the bar video about how i'm gone from content yeah they magically find content space mm -hmm. the next day uh they hire joe um which Joe and I have already talked about that in one of my podcasts. Just you know, we didn't see, or he he saw me as the threat, the 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 douchebag mm -hmm. guy that you know uh, he did because he didn't understand everything. Um, so Joe Joe gets hired. It's Joe and this guy named John. They're running everything. Um, they uh, find a, I guess they find a a, a space. Um, they built it out and they make a trivia videos. Which um, I was like, you know, after dropping me, they're going to still do my, I was so pissed because I was like, they're doing my stuff. They're still, they haven't innovated. Object Plays was me. Trivia was me. Um, you know, Smooth Comp that has now turned into Fuel Royale. That's us. Or it's you. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, <coughs> so, so then... Um, Things are going south so badly because of the backlash of the optic fans. Um, talk, you know, based off of my video, the the next few videos got thrashed, and I thought they were going to have to do Vision. And they and Joe said they told him that he was going to be the lead guy on Vision, a guy who didn't know who Big Timer was. And um, so, what uh, Reed Reed reaches out to Rogers says, "Hey man, can you come down here and just help us during this transition period? Because we don't have, you know, we don't have." Davis anymore and um, Roger gets down here uh, sets up a Modern Warfare 2 video calls me in after uh, we shoot and he was like dude I did not know I hope this doesn't get Roger in trouble I did not know how bad it was it's bad and I was like I'm telling you man I'm not throwing a hissy f I'm never I've never been that guy just to just a bitch for no reason like this is really bad and no one's talking about it so then he sets up he sets up a um, a meeting with Cheney and Jay. It's literally the four of us in an office. And he tells them everything that I had been telling them for months. There's no content space. Nobody there is is passionate about Optic. They don't know what it takes to succeed. All of all of the old vibes of Optic have have completely been you know, disintegrated all of the old, all of the music we used to use for all of these different things. It's all gone. None of the vibes are where they once were. It looks like, it looks like, you know, a, a, a bad corporate video with optic people in it. And that's what all the videos look like. And, um, that meeting quickly. And I, I was, I was a part of that meeting because I was there to offer. I, I, I said many times, I'm just sad. I'm just sad. I'm sad to see what I put all my time into come to this and I would love some sort of solution and that meeting turned into well if you wouldn't have made the around the bar video everything would be fine if you wouldn't have blacked out your avi everything would be fine all these vibes are caused by you and at that point I was like it's done like that was the last that was my last time trying anything because I knew that it was it was a disconnect that was so strong and there was so so much animosity that um, it, it, everything that I know about Optic and everything I knew about the Optic fan base and what they would appreciate and what they would like to see, it would never come to fruition, you know, as, as, as long as everything was being run the way that it was run. And then, um, so that literally, right after that, I give Roger vision because I was just over it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, right after, 
right after vision, right after I give Roger vision, that's when the, the whole purge happens of everybody. So that's the, that's the timeline of that. <clears throat> it, it was, as we, as we sit here on the eve of what's about to happen, uh, the, the chapter ending on infinite, uh, as it, as it stands, I, I can't help but to, you know, and Jude hates when I do this because I blame myself for, because I, 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 I think of, I think so highly of myself <laughs> that everything that happens, good or bad, is my fault. And she hates that because when it's bad, it's bad. And when it's good, whatever, nobody cares. He's you know, braggadocious as it is. Right. But when it's bad, I really, really overthink it. And I'm okay with it. I can, I can handle it. I don't go, I don't go to dark places. I don't, I, I literally, when, when it's a good day, it's a good day. When it's a bad day, I'm still having a good day. Right. You know, like I'm, 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 I'm that. But it is like a lot, uh, like I think of my friendship that I no longer have. I think of, like even even with Chris, you know, now having, you know, talked to him again like three months ago and started, you know, to to think of, of different options. Even then, you know, I told him like, you know, I, I don't I don't hold, you know, I'm 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 glad that I'm here because I vilified you in some of the shit that I should have known because it was my fault. You know, you're here only because I allowed you to be here. Yeah. And I told him like between you and me it was you know it was business. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and and that's that. Other shit that's personal. That's something that cuts deep for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and still, even that, I still blame me for that too. You know what I'm saying? Because had I not done certain things, it wouldn't be the way that it is. Had I not been so combative, you know, had I, had I not walked in there and said, you know what? I feel good coming in here because I get to see how many people it actually takes to do what I did yeah. by myself for seven years. That's not nice. I should have never said that, but I felt it, especially when I was, when when my when my when my thing was being treated the way it was mis being mistreated, I I couldn't help myself but to be an antag antag antagonistical maniac yeah. that just didn't have a fucking filter on them, and it sucks. I mean, still to this very moment, it sucks. I lost a lot, you know, from friendships to the way things were, um, you know, all that, and you know. I, it's it's hard for me to regret, you know, doing that because I know that whether it was them or somebody else, it would have been something else, and it just happened. I feel bad for the investors, you know, because they're fucking incredible people. Right. You right. know what I'm saying? Like the people that lost their jobs as well. Feel that bad yeah, them. yeah. You know, the the investors, man, they trusted in 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 something that had optic attached to it. Yeah. So that I blame myself for too. It's like, man, this, you know, if I would have been just a little bit louder, if I would have made a bigger deal out of things, if I wouldn't have kept quiet, if I would have done more than just black out my thing, I, I, you know, whatever. Because for what it's worth, man, these people are good people, yeah. man. The the investors have lives and 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 have zero to do with what happened. You know what I'm saying? So like, I feel bad for them. Um, but you know. It, it's it's what it is, and there's a million other things that 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 can it's, that I can tell you that's that's led to where we're at today. But what's the what's the point? You know, and this is just your story, and this is just my no scope story. I mean, I, I said it in the flycast, but I mean, you know, buy TP a beer and have him rant to you about GGEA. Buy, you know, sit down with Reed. Read. Sit and down with what he was put on. Sit down. Sit down with PJ and TJ. Sit down with Spratt. You know. Sit down with the Gears team now. It's it's bad, man. It's so bad. How and, do and you like? There's not many people, with maybe the exception of Blackbeard, that. Well, I mean, even Blackbeard's had some really bad situations too. But there's not many people where it's just like. Thank God for Infinite. You know what I mean? I mean, I'd say Joe. Joe is doing really good. Um, but it was it it's a it's probably like I can't believe we are here, dude. Right. Like in my 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 head can't believe that this is happening to Optic. You know what I'm saying? Like it's yeah. I can't believe it. Like even as I sit here, like I understand everything. And I know every single piece of the entire puzzle, and I still don't know 
how, how it happened. Yeah. Where, you mean, I, I don't get it either, man. I don't, I don't understand where people's, where, where some common sense went, went. I, I've never seen people switch up the way that they have. Uh, I've never, I've never had my trust in someone broken so hard. I, I just don't, it, it, last year changed me for sure. Yeah. And I, I don't know if it's for the better or for worse. But. You know, having talked about it right now, like I know why I'm so biased towards banks, yeah. you know? And when he says, he's like, I've never had a homie do me dirty like that. Yeah. Right. And I'm not saying that, that Jay particularly did me dirty in, in any way. Right. It's just, he made his choices. I made my choices and we just don't talk to each other. Yeah. And that's what it is. Right. You know? And, no apology, no, you know, I'm a, I'm an actions guy. You know, I can I can sit here and tell you the world, but if my actions don't follow it, like I I, I can't get behind it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um and it sucks. And I and I said it in the in, in my head, I'm like, I, I can never it's like I can never go back to a relationship like that. Or at least not while, you know, this thing is still going on. Yeah. So it's uh it's it's one of those things where look the only thing we have in life is the people that we care about, and that's something that you can count on. And Optic, for whatever it's worth, is more than just a logo. You know, it, it is It is the... This thing... This thing is only as powerful as it was because... Because of the people, these uh, these were from an optic mailbox. Some dude made us uh, Lego. Remember this? Yeah. Because of that. Because of that, just the people in it. That's what it is. It's more powerful together. Sure. Right. But I mean, without. But, this yeah. is just a, a symbol. This is a logo that we all got behind. But it is not a, a living thing that can communicate with you and tell its story the way that we can. It by itself will never be able to tell you the story the way that you told it. You know what I'm saying? It yeah. took Hitch <laughs> to tell that story. And that's what, that's what, that's what some people just didn't understand. So I mean, what now? Do we even know what now? No. So right now we don't know what now. But I am I am glad that it's it's coming to where it's coming because I can't be in limbo the That's, way that I've been. I, I mean, I I'm just ready for. I mean, we've been it's been in limbo the whole time. Even when we got the house and the vibes were high. I'm like, it's just a matter. I mean, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. Like we'll we'll get small W's, and even those. Have their own issues, but man, I'm just I'm, I'm just ready to see what happens and ready to see if I I mean if we have to go somewhere where we're going or what the fucking next move is because as long as we're in limbo, then we can't like we we want to give I, I I just want to tell stories and I want to entertain and I want you know the the close knit supporter base that I've you know created with myself and with optic and with tst that you know i, I want to be able to get to further that and to keep going and to move forward and i spent so much of 20, 2018 reminiscing mm -hmm. that it just wasn't good and 2019 is about moving forward and i'm really excited to do that uh, i just you know i i didn't think that 2018 i don't think that i think i thought that was the lowest low i thought that that's it, it couldn't get any fucking worse right but 2019 said hold my beer <laughs> you know what i'm saying and yeah. it's uh and and again not knowing what's what's next sucks, especially for a control freak like me. Yeah, and I just know that unless certain things are done the way that we've been doing them for the last fifteen years, fuck, dude. Well, was that thirteen years? It's uh, it's insane. Yeah, it's literal insanity. Um, but. You know, like anything else, keep keep our heads up, keep moving forward. Um, 
and just continue to be optic, yeah. Re- the real optic. Real optic. The real optic. <laughs> Anything else in that book that you want to discuss, or do you think we've There's we've we've covered it? Too many things in that book, but they're all little. They're all little uh, specific instances that we fucked up, though. Because from the beginning, we could have we could have recorded everything that was happening and kept a daily diary of everything that was happening. Yeah, how are we supposed to know that it was going to be this bad? We should have started when I sat in front of the camera when I was doing my vision interview and I said, what did I say? It's like, so you said there are people in this office that think it is in optics, best interest to drop the call of duty team. Imagine if we would have dropped that back then. Huh. I showed Roger that interview. Yeah. He was like, give me that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's, a, that's the next file for sure. Or maybe not. Um, anyway, uh, anything else? Are you good? I think I'm good. All right. Well, that's going to conclude this episode of the eavesdrop. A super long one for you guys. Uh, we we continue with the regular schedule program. Um, obviously, today's Monday, so you guys are listening to this tomorrow. My vlogs return. I have a lot of uh, a lot of things to talk about with you guys, and 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 I will as you know to the best of my ability. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously, as you guys have seen in the in the internet world when somebody doesn't fully explain the entire picture some people sort of take a take a fall and i and, and that's not, that's that's not what i want to do right um but i need it we needed to tell this story it's it's just been sitting it's like you know when when you're embarrassed and you have like this little want to cry thing in the back yeah. like it's that not yeah. that's how i've felt for the last year right. where i have so much to say and so many explanations i just had to explain you know the, this this whole situation and uh, if you if you go back and look at my channel, if you go back and you look at the at the at the optic channel, you know that I am not a person to air out dirty laundry. Right. Not even when I absolutely had to, I still, you know, Did it, yeah. I still didn't because that's where I'm from. But you know, like I said, now that everything has happened the way it's happened, now that everything's public, um, you know, this is what we're talking about. You know, things that's already public and has has already been made, and I think that that made it easier for you know the the, the shit that got out made it easier for us to talk about everything. Yeah, because it's it's out there. It's out. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. A huge shout out to both uh, ExpressVPN and of course DoorDash, uh, who I personally use uh, a lot, especially now that they have Chipotle. Um, not a plug it's just facts anyway we'll see you guys on the next one for episode number 31 i don't know who it is yet but maybe i do because next week is dream hack and there is a fortnite tournament a halo tournament right so i think uh hopefully one of the halo guys will be here we'll do an eavesdrop and we'll sort of revisit this conversation for a small segment of it right so they can discuss you know from their perspective uh and look i i do intend on having if he agrees to Chris Cheney on on here at some point, yeah, uh, to tell me his side of the story, how it went down for him, right? Because there's two sides to every story. In his story, maybe we were the villains. Sure, we were. I know I was. Yeah. So again, we'll we'll see how that goes. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's it, right, man? Did I forget to do anything? No, we're good. All right. On to uh, 600 Seconds, which is a completely different podcast than this one. We'll see you guys on the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>